We're going live. We're here. Hi, everybody. How you doing today? It's your buddy Uncle Bruce here. Stock markets with Bruce, where we try to follow the markets in plain English. Sometimes easier said than done, but we're working on it. Uh, never a dull moment in the markets with all kinds of stuff going on. My gosh, uh, we are up to our neck in stuff here. First of all, um, the markets are are very positive at the moment. Um, have been positive for several hours in the pre-market. This is a good sign. We have the Dow up 368 points in the pre-market. That's a 1% higher. We've got S&P up 66 points. That's up 1.5%. And NASDAQ up 329. 300, let's call it 330 among friends. 2.33% gain on the NASDAQ. The big winner, Microsoft. They delivered. They delivered. Their earnings were substantially higher than had been forecast. This is one of the Fang big boys, and uh, uh, the stock is reacting very positively because, as I told you yesterday, and I've been mentioning over the last little while, Microsoft shares are way off already from their highs back in November when the markets hit their last all time highs. Um, Microsoft has survived all the crap from um, interest rate talk and inflation talk and supply chain disruption talk and COVID. Talk. It doesn't matter to Microsoft. <clears throat> it, it doesn't seem to matter to Microsoft. They make more money anyway. Okay. Uh, good news. I'm not mad. I'm happy. I'm thrilled. Uh, this is good stuff. Uh, Microsoft. Um, has been as high as $349 a share, just under $350, okay? This morning, we're back to $300. The low lately, um, what was this, the last week here? Oh, my gosh, it was ridiculous. Uh, $277 or something like that from $350 in like a month and a half. Stupid. Uh, people dropping Microsoft 20% lower than it was. They just came in with stellar phenomenal numbers. They broke 50 billion in sales in a quarter. That's 200 billion a year in sales now. This is a huge, huge, huge. Yeah, uh, net earnings came in at 248 a share, net net earnings versus estimates of 231. The analysts still can't get it right. They still can't get it right as to how much money these guys are making. 231 was a big increase by analysts, a stretch. The company comes in 17 cents higher. Normally an analyst misses by half a penny, maybe a penny. That's usually how accurate these guys are, within a half a penny. This is 17 cents. You're not even in the same neighborhood. You're not in the same area code. Microsoft is pouring on the money. Apple reports tomorrow. Tesla reports tonight, all right? This is why the market is higher. The market is beginning to understand what, again, I've mentioned this a couple of times on the last two weeks. Talk to you guys about how the markets have been evolving. The markets have been going from uh, going from, uh, from growth stocks, high PE multiples over to value stocks, like, uh, like going from, uh, from Apple and Microsoft and Facebook and Google and Amazon over to bank stocks, food companies, uh, you know, the staples, you know, the, the, the grocery store stocks. Loser. You're a loser if you're going over there. Why? Because they're the ones with supply chain problems. They're the ones with inflation problems. They're the ones who have pissed off shoppers. When you go into an Albertsons, a Safeway, a Publix, whatever your gro wherever your grocery store is, you go in two, three times a week to pick up a few things or do a major purchase, you're the one on the, you see on the shelf what's not there. Uh, maybe what's what you want is there, but not the size you want. Like the mayo you like is there, but not the size you always buy. Or the ketchup you like is there, but it's in the wrong size. It's not on sale anymore. Uh, you, you're, you're, you're getting upset. You're getting upset. Microsoft doesn't have that problem. Apple doesn't have that problem. This thing right here, if Apple says this is $1,059, you pay it. If Apple says this is $984, you pay it. If the Apple said this is $1,358, you pay it. You don't, you don't even bother comparison shopping. Where are you going to comparison shop this? You going to another 
Apple store down the street to compare shop? No, the, how you get one of these is either you pay cash through your credit card or what have you at an Apple store, or you buy it through your telephone company on installments on a two-year plan. Of course, that's how you buy this and you pay full price for it. And what the deal is between the phone company and uh, your cell phone company and Apple, you, you don't care. Do you give a crap? You don't. You pay your monthly fee for the service and the plan, and you get one of these brand new telephones. You don't care. But at the grocery store, you can't do that. You can't go into Albertsons and say, listen, I'll give you 100 bucks a week for my groceries for the next two years, okay? Well, can we cut the deal on that? No. No, 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 no. Our sirloin is eight ninety nine a pound, and our, our filet mignons are $28 a pound, or whatever the numbers are. It's what you pay. Shut the hell up. Give me the money now. I don't care if you're not happy. Because... We're in a pandemic and I, we can't get workers and we can't get the supplies and fast enough. And that's it. That's that's that. I went to uh, Walmart last night, had to pick up a couple of provisions. And uh, at the Walmart, the super Walmart that is about three miles away from here. It's a lovely little Tesla ride from here, by the way. Um, I get into the store and I know that uh, the two things I need, I need cream for my coffee, half and half for my coffee. And I need some caffeine-free Diet Coke. I know both of those are at the very back of the store, which makes you walk all the way through the grocery aisles, all the way in the back, and all the way back to the front. I get to the very back of the Walmart store, and I get to where the cream is, where the half and half is, and the milk, and the, and the whipping cream, and the 2%, and the 1%, and the yada, 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 yada. I find the half and half. It's it's a house brand of uh, Walmart half and half. Like there's a like Walmart cows. Like really, um, there are six containers of half and half. Six. It's um, about uh, four thirty in the afternoon. Four in the afternoon. There are six of them, and I'm thinking, wow. Uh, I grab mine, and I'm thinking, holy moly, they're going to be out of stock here in like the next half an hour. And I don't see any in the back of this fridge unit. Like they're out. They're out of half and half. This is kind of a staple. <laughs> then I went to the Coca-Cola aisle, which is just beside it. They have they don't have cans of caffeine-free Diet Coke. Haven't had cans in months. But they got the two-liter bottles of Coca-Cola. They have those. The regular Coke, how much you want? Help yourself. Diet Coke, they had four two-liter bottles in Walmart. Super Walmart. There were four two-liter bottles and no caffeine freeze, all empty, all blank. The most of the shelf was empty. So I grabbed two of the regular Diet Cokes. I figured, well, I got a couple of bottles of Diet Coke. At least I can burp, you know. It'll keep me awake, but I'll burp. And I then thought, wait a minute, Bruce, hold it a second. You know, you know, March, you know, merchandising, you know how these guys operate. There is a display, an aisle display of Coca-Cola bottles towards the front of the store. There's always one up there. Why don't you go and take a look at that? So I meandered my way all the way up to the front of the store, found the island display, and 70% oh, of it is regular Coke. 20% of it is uh, Diet Coke. And then I'm looking in between, I see some of those gold-colored labels on the two-liter bottles, caffeine-free Diet Coke. Well, your buddy Uncle Bruce started digging in and uh, moving bottles out of the way and getting out the Diet Coke, the caffeine freeze, putting the Diet Cokes I bought in there and moving some other around, rebuilding the dang thing. And I got five bottles of caffeine free. Now, why am I telling you all this? Why am I boring you with my gro grocery story? Because I'm telling you, the grocery store is out of stock of most basic goods in the levels they like to carry. You'll find, and you've probably noticed, that you go to your favorite stores out there and you find most of the things you want, but not all the things you want every single time anymore. And we're getting used to this. We're also getting used to the fact that the prices are rising. When I was checking out, I had to do my self-checkout, which I think, by the way, is the death knell of Walmart. I think Walmart has made a fatal error. They've gotten rid of the 25 cash registers at the front of the store and replaced them with four cash registers, human beings, and the rest are, you do it yourself, self-check it. The death knell of Walmart. This is going to kill these guys. I, I, I don't see this working. Uh, I hate it. I absolutely despise it, and I don't want to go back. 
I only go back to Walmart when I absolutely have to. Don't don't like the experience. Anyway, I'm checking out these items. And I noticed that the bottles of cola are $1.96. And my brain is going, well, I kind of like to pay $1.48 for this on sale. You think I took them back? No, because I know I can't find this stuff. I'll buy these and I'll pay the 50 cents extra to have it. And that's the mentality of the shopper right now. A shopper's pissed off. They're upset. They don't like the lack of service. They don't like how they have to do self-checkouts more and more and more uh, retail locations. Uh, selection is crappy. Prices are rising. And this is the problem with overall retail. Go to my Costco store. If I could buy caffeine-free Coke at Costco, I'd buy 12 at a time. Knowing that when I get to the checkout, I only take out one bottle and put it on the conveyor belt and say, I got 12 of those. And they just go, here's your money. And we're gone. I'm out of there. And it's fantastic. I don't need it packaged. I don't need it put in bags. It would be great. But I can't get what I want completely at a Costco. Nobody can because Costco has limited product with limited prices. It is what it is. The markets are going to go higher because Microsoft has delivered the goods, the stocks we give a crap about. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, uh, Google, Facebook. These outfits are making money in the middle of a pandemic and have been for two years already. Remember, this thing is now approaching two years since the ship in Japan, in Yokohama, the Tokyo Harbor, the Diamond Princess cruise ship was parked over there, docked over there, and they wouldn't let the passengers off. They basically gave them a death sentence by locking them into their cabins and allowing that virus to spread all over the damn ship. And they started carrying people out in body bags. Completely the wrong way to do it. And then, of course, every ship was barred from every port known to mankind. A complete overreaction. But we didn't know. Now we know how to handle this thing, or at least we think we know. In any event, these companies have had two years to figure out how to make money in the middle of a pandemic, and they have perfected it. Most of uh, goods that you buy from Microsoft don't require you to go to a store and buy. You don't go into a store to buy Microsoft's products. Most of the items at Apple, you almost don't buy either. You don't have to go to a store to buy this. If you don't want to leave your house, they'll deliver this to you. Either your phone company will deliver it to you, Amazon will deliver it to you, whoever you want. You can get one of these through a plan without leaving your house. If you really don't want to do that, um, they know how to make money. Uh, these outfits know what they're doing and the market is going, oh, great. Okay, 50, uh, 50 uh, something percent, 48 percent of the uh, NASDAQ 100 is made up of seven stocks, including Microsoft and Apple and others. 23% um, of the S&P 500 is made up of the FANG stocks. Uh, the Dow has huge uh, power as far as uh, you know, influence from Apple and Microsoft and so on. Yeah, the markets are higher because these entities, these big boys are doing fine. And do they need to borrow money? Does Microsoft need to go to a bank to borrow money to pay its bills? Uh, no. Does Apple need to go to a bank and borrow money? Uh, no. The only reason these two companies will borrow money at all is to screw the American taxpayer. It's the only reason they're gonna do it. Now, they say, the companies, hey, well, we're not screwing the American taxpayer. We're benefiting our shareholders because we're not going to repatriate money into the United States from overseas because we get taxed on it. We don't wanna pay tax to the United States government, which means we're not giving Americans uh, our share of the tax money. We're gonna allow, we're gonna make money in the United States and pay tax on that. Yes, our domestic sales, great, but overseas, that, that we're not gonna do that. Now, maybe it's unfair that American corporations pay tax when they repatriate money, but that's your, everybody has their opinion on that. The bottom line is that these companies don't need to borrow money to survive. The only time they borrow money is when they wanna buy back their stock with the money they have overseas that they're not going to repatriate. They can't use the overseas money to buy their stock. That is domesticating the money. That means you have to pay tax on it. So what you do is you borrow the money from bankers in the United States who are more than happy to help the company screw the American taxpayer and let the company buy the stock back. And that makes the shareholders happy, which makes pension funds happy, which makes mutual funds happy, makes ETFs happy, and makes 
option writers happy because stocks go up and then back off and go up and back up and option writers love the volatility everybody's happy what's to worry about there you go there's today's world in a nutshell here we are and come down to medium-sized companies that are only worth a couple of hundred billion dollars each and smaller companies that are only worth tens of billions of dollars each of each and then down to the micro companies that are worth a couple of billion dollars each and then the micro 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 companies that are worth hundreds of millions of dollars each and then there's mom and pop restaurants and uh, whatever worth thousands of dollars each welcome to the world in today's uh, economy in any event uh oracle is buying back its stock Facebook is buying up its stock. Microsoft is buying up its stock. Apple is buying back its stock. Everyone's buying back their stock. These markets are going higher. That's the end game. That is the end of the story. The stock markets will hit new all-time highs this year again. And the simple reason is that the dominant players of this stock market are maybe two dozen companies uh, overall dominate most of this world, uh, most of this corporate world. And everybody else is a bit player, but even those guys are doing well. There's companies that are losing and missing out on their numbers. I get that. There's always that. But where it counts, these guys are delivering home runs. And they have got so much cash. They have too much money. They can't. They don't want to put the money into factories to build product because they don't build products. They source it out or they create the product digi digitally because that's where we are headed. That is why I am here in front of you on this camera right now. It's all digital. The reason that that you guys are watching me is because you don't go to the office anymore. You're watching me digitally and you're working digitally. The, this is the worry the world has gone to a certain percentage. This didn't exist in 1965 when my dad was selling musical instruments to music stores all over Ontario in Canada, but using his car and walking into a music store and talking to the owner, hoping in the back of my dad's mind, I hope he's had a good month this month and he's in a good mood because sometimes he would walk into a store and the owner would just say, just get out. Don't even bother saying hi to me. Don't, I don't want to share a cigarette with you. I don't even want to talk to you. I'm so upset with blah, blah, blah. I'm not buying anything. See you next month. And he'd just turn around and walk out. He just drove 200 miles. He just drove 200 miles for a scheduled appointment to see the guy in person. And he just says, leave. Most of the time, thankfully, most of the time, my dad would walk into a music store in Port Arthur, Ontario, which is now Thunder Bay, or Port William, which is now Thunder Bay, or North Bay, or he'd walk into Sudbury, Ontario, or he'd drive up to Geraldton, which is way the heck up there in Ontario. He'd walk into Sault Ste. Marie, he'd go into Kingston, Cornwall, Ottawa, Peterborough, Windsor, uh, uh, dozens and dozens of towns and cities. He'd walk in the store and these store owners would go, I'm glad you're here. You're always one of the happiest people, one of the most pleasant people to deal with. How are you, Mr. Frommert? It's nice to see you. What's new? Tell me what's going on. And my dad would fill him in on what's happening in the music business and what's happening elsewhere. And then the two would talk about you name it. And he'd know this guy likes talking about politics. This guy likes talking about this. This guy likes talking about that. My father was a people person and he got to know them. But that was those were the days where you had to do it in person because people went downtown to go shopping when they went shopping. And what was downtown? The shoe guy, the jewelry store, the laundromats, the the uh, the department stores were downtown. The grocery stores were just uh, in the burbs a little bit, but most of the shopping was downtown. You did it all downtown. And the music store was downtown. And that's where the kids would go in, the, the teenagers. Mom and dad would shop for shoes and clothing and what have you. And the kids would go to their favorite stores, one of which is the hobby shop and the bicycle shop and the music store. And uh, that's what my dad serviced. That world is gone. That world is gone. Where's, where's, do you, do you have a music store in your little town where you live? Is there a place where you can go downtown to the music store and buy a guitar? Where do you buy a guitar now? Sam Ash Music Centers at the Ontario Mills Mall, store of 30,000 square feet. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's maybe where you buy a guitar. Uh, can you find anyone who knows anything about guitars in there? A couple of guys, but not many. Can you go into dedicated mom and pop music stores and talk to the owner about uh, the Martin D18 hanging up there? No, no, that's good. Those days are gone. You're online now. Digital. We're all digital. Welcome to the world in which we live. Hey, for better or for worse, we're here. Okay, that's it. And many of you are here, here because of the digital world. And you're going to stay here going forward because this is the frontier we're now entering. Maybe, maybe in the future, you'll watch me with special glasses on and you'll actually get this face in 3D. Oh, I, 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 pity, I pity the fool. I pity any of you who ever do that. Um, I don't think I ever want to go to that level because I don't want to scare you guys away. I want to hang on to the viewers I got. I don't want to keep losing them. Uh, but there will come a time where we will wear glasses like they look like this uh, that will be uh, wirelessly connected to the server, to the whatever, and we will watch on our screens 3D everything, 3D videos on YouTube. We'll watch 3D television shows, movies, whatever, right in the comfort of our little old dens or bedrooms or wherever we are. And that's the way it's going to go. And we're going to be watching in 3D work. We're going to be working in 3D. That's coming as well. It's just down the road. Many of you in your 50s will probably get out before you have to do it. Uh, those of you in your 20s and 30s, of course, you can't wait for this to happen. Uh, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be new. It's going to be different. It's going to be everything. And then there'll be old timers who are now 50 years old to say, I remember when... Uh, we got our first computers in the office. <laughs> and the 80-year-olds right now say, I remember when we, we got our first uh, uh, servers in the office. We got our first computers in the accounting department. I remember that. Uh, then there's the old timers like me who said, I remember when I got a report card from school the first time on a computer, 1974. I got, a comp I got my report card that was printed off a computer. I had a sheet of paper that was now my report card pure garbage, but it was early days. Um, prior to that, we landed man on the moon with a computer that isn't one one hundredth as powerful as this. And that's what put man on the moon. What? Uh, watch Apollo 13 sometime. Um, yeah, things have evolved and will continue to do so. Star Trek right now, uh, the 60s version is, is out of date. Uh, Star Trek, uh, the last generation, it's out of date. Uh, we're, we're, we're virtual now. Uh, they didn't even have virtual. They had some stuff that was ahead of us, but we're catching and passing those guys already. And that was just a TV show. Oh my gosh, unbelievable. Welcome to the markets. Welcome to the world today. We're going to have a bit of a run here this morning. We're up 384 or so on the Dow. We're up 65 on the S&P. We're up 300 on the NASDAQ. Oil's up a buck 26 to 86.86. 86. Lots of stuff going on uh, around the world. Headline just came out. US, tread line, U.S. trade deficit in goods tops $1 trillion for the first time ever. Trillion dollars deficit in goods. In other words, America is buying more than it's selling. And that's obvious because offshore you have all of these container ships full of goods that are trying to come in. And the ships offload those things and they don't even wait to get filled up with stuff to leave because what they're supposed to do is come into port after waiting how many weeks, offload their crap, go back out and wait a couple of weeks longer to come in and pick up loads of containers to go back to Asia. They're not doing that. They're turning around empty and going back to Asia because in Asia, there are containers waiting for ships to come in to just load them up and get them out of here. And so they're going back empty, filling up and coming back to the States and waiting two weeks to offload them and going back empty and coming back. And the empty containers are piling up in the United States. The empty containers that are supposed to be going back right now, they're not a priority at all for the container shipping companies. They're far rather, they're far more eager to just keep bringing full containers in. And China makes containers. They can make containers just as fast as you need them. And so more containers are being made, 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 made. And eventually there'll be a glut of containers because there will be millions of them stacked everywhere that are empty. And uh, uh, we'll, have that, we'll have that collapse of that market, but not right now. And so America is importing way more than it's exporting because its infrastructure is so fouled up. The United States infrastructure is so screwed up 
and is so patchworked put together and has been so ignored at every level of management and government and agencies because of funding cuts or lack of funding, America can't get its goods out in an efficient manner to the waiting world. And Americans are paying dearly for this with these trade deficits. And look at the uh, interest rates that American taxpayers have to pay to borrow money versus German taxpayers have to pay to borrow money or Japanese taxpayers have to pay to borrow money or other countries like Italy. I mean, what? It Italians pay less money to borrow money than Americans do on a federal level? Yes, it's true. Even in Spain, they pay less money because America is inefficient. America is incredibly resourceful. Amer America's Canadians, oh, we're smart people. We're really sharp, you know. We're very entrepreneurial. The thing is that we're so entrepreneurial, we, we figured out ways to screw ourselves again and again and again and again because rather than do the hard lifting, we find shortcuts. And what we really do, what we're really good at, and this isn't just on a personal level, this is on a corporate level, we are experts at hiring people to influence other people to keep it going the way it is and make it easier for us and screw everybody else. And that's called hiring lobbyists. The bell just went off at the right time. Lobbyists. Americans and Canadians are experts at hiring lobbyists to influence our elected officials to make it easier for our corporations to succeed and screw the rest of the economy. We don't care. Uh, I'm a tobacco company. I don't want to be sued in court for tobacco problems. I'm a gun manufacturer. I don't want to be sued in court for people using guns. I'm a uh, trucking company. I want easier rules on the um, smoke that my, uh, my trucks emit into the air. I'm a builder of trucks. I make Mack trucks. I make big fat diesel engines that just burn this cheap fuel and just spew this stuff up into the air. I want politicians in Washington not to put serious regulations on top of my engines. So I'll hire somebody. Uh, rather than build a more efficient engine and build better systems and be ahead of the government regulations, I'll fight them. And if people oppose me, they're socialists and they're against America. And that's how this game is played. And so you have now one part of the country against the other part of the country fighting at each other while we pollute the air. <laughs> and we don't build our ports out. And we don't build the infrastructure. We got potholes all over the place. We have bridges in unbelievable repair. And no politician in Washington can come in there and get things done because we don't want things done. We want things to be easier. We don't want things done. We want things to be easier get government out of my life that's what we want and so we pay people to keep government out of our life but you know what uh you, you at the end of the day the, the the almighty dollar will judge all of us for what it is we do and at the moment if you are in the digital world and you don't need tr transport trucks to move your finished goods from point a to point b you don't have to worry about the infrastructure of the united states if you don't have boxes and, and container loads of goods, you don't have to worry about potholes. You don't have to worry about bridges. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. If you're a digital creator of goods, all you need is an internet that just lets it go out there and people to download it and pay electronically. I mean, I can give Microsoft money without ever talking to a Microsoft person. And I, I, I send them money with my credit card or my debit card without ever stepping foot into a Microsoft store. These guys are making money without ever touching another human being. No retail locations, no return department, no nothing. It's fantastic. Of course, if you are XYZ retail company, um, like, uh, you know, used to be Toys R Us, uh, you need toys to be brought in, manufactured, made overseas, brought in, delivered, man uh, distributed across the US by rail, by truck. Uh, to distribution centers, to your retail distribution centers, to your stores, to your customers. Uh, and then you had to take the returns and, and, and all that. So, I mean, that's a losing business. The retail business is a losing business. Uh, Target, the Target company, Walmart, as I said, Walmart is a loser. 
Walmart is a loser if you think they're going to make a lot more money going forward with us having to walk in there and buy stuff that isn't available anymore or is in short supply and self-checkout and no one to help take my bags to my car. Oh, and I got to pay for the bag on top of that. This is a loser. Th this company will make money, yes, but they will make money from the low-income American, not the middle and higher income. Why? Because those people are going to learn and they're going to figure it out. If they haven't figured it out already, I will never go to a Walmart. I will hire someone to go to a Walmart for me. I will never set foot in there again. If I can avoid it, I will. And that is the way it's going to go. We're going to have the divide, the great divide, where those who have resigned from work will stay at home and not go to the office anymore. And they won't also go to certain spots anymore to do what they need to do. And Walmart is going to be one of the losers. And it's going to be home delivery because I drive by the Super Walmart yesterday to look for a parking spot. And I noticed that the first 25 stalls over here, I can't use. You know what those are for? Pickup. Those are for pickup where you've already ordered your product online. You've ordered it on here when you went to Chipotle's. You ordered it on here when you were in the drive through at McDonald's waiting to get your order. You ordered it on here when you were taking a dump at home on your bath in your bathroom. You ordered from Walmart what you needed this afternoon at a 3 o'clock pickup or a 3.30 pickup. And then you drove into the parking lot and you hit the little button to take your order and they brought it out. They've got these employees with these shopping carts bringing out your order, loading it into your car, and you're just finalizing receipt and you're, you're out of there. This is the new normal for a certain level of, of a client going forward. The so-called um, point of purchase uh, idea like uh, Home and Garden magazine on the checkout aisle or buying the old, remember the old TV guide you used to buy right at the checkout stand or the kids would get a comic book or you'd buy a chocolate bar or you'd buy some Tic Tacs. Those days are gone. There are no cash registers for you to do that anymore. In Walmart, those self-checkout units have no merchandise around them. This is the death knell of many a retailer going forward. This, this is completely changing it out. And I, as a guy who is walking into that store, am upset because I can't find a goddamn parking spot anywhere near the front door. I'm okay, I can walk, I'm all right, I don't have hip problems, but I know people who do have hip problems. I do know, I do see customers who are using uh, walkers or canes to come and go. They have to walk further down because the convenience spots are over here for the pickup right in front of the store. Uh, it's it's a divide, a huge divide. This is going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. This is all evolving. Remember, a lot of Walmart stores are in locations that are 20 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old. They can't just alter the layout of the land. It, it, it's a massive re-engineering of the entire parking lot, store, drive-through, whatever this is. This, this is going to take years to figure out. Um, and for, uh, for uh, cities that have these businesses, death knell, absolute nightmare. Uh, you used to count, a uh, city used to count on sales tax revenue, used to deliver, used to d uh, depend upon, um, um, you know, wages uh, being paid to, to employees who work at these stores and these places. And, and you know, state taxes and whatever, we have property taxes and what have you. Certain property is going to depreciate in value because they become more warehouse-like rather than retail-like. Shopping malls used to be gigantic tax centers for cities. Shopping centers had all this tax revenue coming in from sales taxes, property taxes, and everything else. Shopping centers are being bulldozed. They're being annihilated, and they're being replaced with condos and apartments and uh, strip-type malls much lower tax revenues, much lower tax revenues. And this is the death knell of towns and cities. This is their problem. Now they got to raise money another way. Well, one way was to raise the gasoline tax. Perhaps we could do that, or we could raise property taxes for other businesses. Well, businesses are leaving. They're moving out into the burbs. They are, uh, you know, there are just fewer of them. There's not as many of this brand anymore or that brand. Now they have superstores. So they've gotten rid of 12 stores and replaced it with four. Yeah, well, that's, that's a way to reduce expenses and employees 
and the tax bill, and on and on it goes. It is, it's an evolution, a complete revolution going forward, evolution going forward. The world is changing because we're at home now, and then we're not going back. Um, yeah, gone are the days. I pity New York City. Gone are the days where we're commuting in for an hour and a half every day on the rail and then the subway and with buses. Are you out of your mind? I'm not, I'm not doing that. I might be 24 and 25 years old, and I'm happy to go to downtown Midtown. Yeah, okay. But I'm I'm 44, and I'm 42, I'm, I'm 38, and I got kids now? That's not that's not happening. No, I'm in the burbs, man, and I'm staying here. I'm not going in there. When, my, when I go into Midtown Manhattan, it's with my wife on a Saturday night to see a play. But we're just down there for a certain number of hours, and then we're out of there, and that's it. Uh, th th this is a this is a difference, and this is downtown everywhere. I'm not just picking on New York. I love New York. Um, I'm talking about the world at large. Uh, a lot of commuting is now being eliminated with people staying at home and being more productive digitally. Anyway, there you have it. My rent is done. Uh, we're 23 minutes from the opening. Uh, thank you all for uh, being here. Um, we're going to see how this all plays out as we start off the day. I'm looking for a bit of a recovery to start the morning. We're going to see first three hours how much momentum this uptick has really got, how deep is it. Um, and then we're going to find out when Mr. Powell speaks later today just how hawkish or dovish is he going to be at all, how the markets will react to that. Um, and then we'll see just what this rally is made of. Is this a is this a one day, a half a day rally? Is this a one day rally? Is this a uh, the beginning of a five day rally? Uh, when does it peter out? Does it peter out? And if it does peter out, how badly does it peter out? And who are the winners and the losers going forward? Um, some pre-market quotes for you. Rocket Lab is at 888, up 39 cents. I've got SoFi at 1316, up 40 cents. These are all pre-markets. GameStop, I'm showing at 103, up 321 a share. I've got Matterport up 63 cents now at 1103. I've got uh, 23 and Me showing a 17 cent gain at 457. I'm seeing spire up 16 cents it looks like at 237 i don't have any pre-market trading this morning on atip or on smart rent i show sextera down 12 cents at 1107 i got apple up three bucks to 162.79 they come out with their earnings tomorrow night I've got Goldman up 394 to 345.50. I have Cisco up six cents to 56.17, and I got Tesla showing a 36.90 gain with a 9.55 uh, last trade. And they report tonight, and rumors are very positive for what to expect tonight. There's a, a very strong uh, indication that Tesla will be uh, reporting some seriously good numbers. U.S. trade deficit in goods widened by 3% to a record $101 billion in December. Uh, the reports are coming out. These are government reports. We'll watch out for more of those. Um, we are seeing a lot of upgrades, downgrades, maintain uh, recommendations from analysts all over the place. That's to be expected. It is, after all, a new year, and we've had some serious downdrafts on a number of stocks. Um, Kathy Woods uh, quoted as saying, she is uh, maintaining her strong stance and will continue to double down, triple down, quadruple down. She's going to keep buying the stocks that she's been buying, especially in the ARK Innovation Fund. She is not backing off. The fund hit a low of 64.98 the other day. This morning, it is at 73.20, up 241 again. It is now up $8 from its low, which is over 12% from its low already and looks very, very good at the moment. Again, because so many of the stocks that she's invested in have been crushed in the markets. Uh, of course, Tesla up today um, is good for her fund because 7.8% uh, of her total assets are in Tesla for just this one fund, the innovation fund. Roku, 6%, Teladoc Health, 5.9%, Zoom Video, 5.8%, Coinbase is 5% of the fund, Unity Software, 475, Spotify, 4.1%, Twilio, 4%, Exact Scientist, 3.8%, and on and on it goes. We're going to see how all of these different stocks uh, perform and how they react. Uh, as an example here, Roku is uh, her second largest holding in her fund. It's up $4.81 to $157, up 3%. The stock was as low as $139. It's now $156. 
Uh, Teladoc Health, uh, just looking at this, uh, 7410 up $2. The low, 66 It's now 74 um, Zoom video communications, $150.70 up $481. The low, $138. Uh, again, I'm assuming this is just in the last few days that it hit $138. Coinbase. 193.30 a share up 775 in pre-market the low 162 we can see here how again and again and again these stocks that make up 50 percent of the s the nasdaq 100 that this fund arc innovation is into all of these stocks are rolling higher every single one of them is improving because they are all massively over oversold overcooked and this is the same thing for a bunch of our stocks a bunch of our favorites that we've been watching they have been over hit on the downside and it is no surprise to me to see uh stocks like our our um, rocket lab for example is up four and a half percent to 888 so far at the moment only up three percent deserves much better than this at 1315 gamestop up three point three percent matterport up five point nine percent to 11 bucks 23 and me up three point eight percent spire up seven point three percent all of these have been oversold, every single one of them, including ATIP, SmartRent, Sextera, hasn't dropped that much, but a bunch of these guys have had uh, been caught up in the vortex of selling because um, I believe there are hedge funds out there and other entities out there who have uh, really got caught with their hand in the cookie jar with derivatives trading, and I think there have been a number of cases where um, outfits are just getting crushed, um, where they've had to sell off um, uh, stocks uh, for cash to attempt to correct their books. They've been getting margin calls from bankers all over the world, and I have a feeling that the Swiss, uh, the Swiss bank people, the uh, the um, uh, Goldman Sachs, the JP Morgans of the world, uh, all these other investment bankers who used to be a lot more generous with credit for these entities out there have pulled back dramatically and said, no, 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 we, uh, we're we not going to allow you to do a 40 to 1 leverage, a 20 to 1 leverage, or whatever. We're going to pull you guys back. And that's what's happening with the uh, tightening of credit because if the Fed is going to reduce the amount of bonds that they hold out there, and, and tighten up the market and possibly raise rates, investment bankers are making the preemptive move already to put the squeeze on these guys to say, no, we want you to uh, reduce your leverage with us by 20%, 30%. Um, and they probably notified them back in December to get this started. And they have been just systematically selling off stock. And the lower stock goes, the more trouble these hedge funds have been getting into because they're over leveraged and they have to sell more they have to sell more they thought that if they sold 10 percent of their fund that that would fix the problem and then they found that the fund is down 15 percent now they got to sell another 10 15 percent well then the fund dropped another five percent they got to drive it they got to sell more it doesn't end on the way down until it ends and either you pay off a half of all the debt you have three quarters of all the debt you have or you put more cash into the fund to stop the bleeding um then it ends and this is where i contend sofi is sitting where it is not because sofi is a bad company and they don't know what they're doing and the bank charter doesn't mean anything sofi is where it is because it's over ten dollars a share sofi is a winner on the SPAC game because they did their pipe financing at $10 a share. They went public at 10 bucks a share. So if I bend it in onto that, so into that SPAC for $2.4 billion in cash, we're talking 240 million shares that were issued out there at least. And some of those shares, a good chunk of those shares have come up for free trading. And I think my personal hunch is that there are hedge funds out there and other investment groups out there that were involved in the pipe financing that needed, they needed all the billions they could find. And they realized that, well, we can just sell the SoFi stock here at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 bucks. We'll just sell this to take care of our bank calls. And this will solve a lot of problems because we have a bunch of other SPACs we bought that we put 
$10 pipe financing together for, and we're down on a bunch of these, we're even on a bunch of these, we're going to use the winner to handle the losers. And uh, we'll use the others who we're breaking even on, and then we'll use some of the losers at, at seven, eight, nine dollars. We'll sell those, but they'll be compensated by this. And so what you have is SoFi being dropped by these hedge funds who are over leveraged on too many investments at the same time. They're selling the winners to hold on to the losers or at least survive themselves. And um, this is where I think SoFi has been caught up in the vortex of selling because of forced liquidations that have been done. Uh, despite all that, it's up 38 cents in the pre-market to 13.14, which is a joke. It's off, it's at 50% off right now. This stock is half price so far. I know it, most of you know it, but the problem is that between me and you, there are 614 of you watching me right now. So 615 of us know Absolutely no, that SoFi is half its regular, uh, should be, it's half what it should be trading at. Unfortunately, of the 615 of us, uh, even as smart as we are and everything we know and as much as we love SoFi, there are probably 500 million people who don't know that, who should know that, that are in the market and they're not hearing this message. Now, we could say part of it is because you don't give me enough thumbs ups and help me expand the channel, but it's not your fault although I, I do love your thumbs up. It's just the way it is. Uh, SoFi has the NFC Championship game. Yeah. SoFi has the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's great. That's not going to change uh, 500 million people's minds into buying SoFi stock because I'll tell you the reason why. The 500 million people that need to know about SoFi don't watch the Super Bowl. The 500 million I'm talking about don't live in America. They don't live in Canada. They might or might not live in Europe. I would say a bunch of them do, but they don't care about the Super Bowl. It's not their number one priority. The sports that these people care about are, it's called football, but it's no, we call it soccer. They care about cricket. We don't give a crap about cricket. They care about tennis. We like tennis. Do we love tennis? No. But there are countries in the world where tennis is a big deal. So is cricket. So is football. There's where your 500 million are. These are the folks that need to know who SoFi is and what they do. They don't know. They don't know who it is. I, I'm not big in India. I'm probably never going to be big in India. I'm not big in other countries of the world where uh, this crowd will come from. They will have to come into this market as they find out about SoFi. Slowly but surely, they will. But at the moment, uh, there are North American investors who know about SoFi. The problem is that the North American investors who are into SoFi and love the SoFi are noticing how the shares are at 13 13 a share and going, why is that? And they're finding out uh, they investigate it. If they do investigate it, some don't investigate. You just sell out and say, it didn't go to 25. I'm out of here. It's a, I bought a 12. It's at 13. I'm a, a week later. You're still not at 25 bucks. I'm out. Um, these folks aren't going to get the goods. What they're hearing, uh, if they do any digging, is that, well, the stock's being sold off by hedge funds. Well, then they say, well, why is that? What's wrong with the company? And there's nothing wrong with the company. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. Say, that, that can't be. There's, the market never lies. The market never lies. If the stock's at 1313, it's because there's something wrong with the company. I don't care what Bruce says. I don't care what anybody at, at Redbubble uh, or at, uh, at um, uh, Reddit says, I don't care what anyone says on Wall Street bets. You guys are lying. You don't know what you're talking about. What is this crap about hedge funds who are over leveraged, blah, blah, blah. Until we see carnage on the hedge fund department to verify our thoughts, we're on the outside looking in and we're the outliers making this call. But I am looking at this going, this is not normal trading. No, no. we've traded 800 million to a billion shares of stock in the last week on SoFi. Do you know that? Did you know that? Uh, we traded yesterday 72 million shares. A very quiet day lately. Very quiet day lately. Um, we're approaching a billion shares of trading since the announcement was made on the bank uh, on the bank deal. My gut tells me half of that is day trading. Buying and selling, 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 just flip overs to flippers, 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 looking for a quick nickel, dime, quarter, in and out, in and out, in and out traders. That's half of it. The other 500 million shares traded are actual people positioning themselves, some getting out, some getting in. And uh, 
uh, I think on the out going out, uh, 300 million shares, 400 million probably sold off by those who got stock released and were hoping for the $25, $30 payday that didn't come. And they are in need of billions of dollars in IOUs with their bankers, their backers. And they didn't get it from SoFi in the first week of SoFi's phenomenal accomplishment, bank charter. And now they're blowing out because they have no choice. They have to get out. And so they're being blown away. And there are hopes, dreams, and aspirations. There are yachts that were going to be purchased. There are Gulfstream 700s. And we're going to be ordered. There are uh, uh, Bentleys and there are high-end Teslas and there are high-end mansions that were going to be acquired and built and designed and, and what have you on the back of the $30 SoFi stock because there are entities out there who are long the stock and are longer the stock through derivatives through London and everywhere else around the world and all of those guys who leveraged the bejesus out of themselves to take advantage of the $30 SoFi. The sure, the sure thing, the sure thing bet of all time was this is going to 30 bucks as soon as you get the bank charter. The sure bet. They're all getting their butts handed to them and they're being told by their backers, get out, I want my money back. I've lent you this money. You told me you'd, you'd only need it until the, the bank charter thing came out. And then within a couple of weeks of that, you'd be just great. I've given you enough time. I don't see the stock doing what you said it was going to do. I want my money back because I don't like the leverage that you have. You're at 20 to 1, 30 to 1, 41, 51. Who knows? It's unregulated. I don't know. You tell me. I have no idea. It's insanity. And so they're getting blown out. The good news is they're almost done. They really are just about done because we do have 806 million shares in existence. We have 564 million that can free trade. And I bet you half of those shares have free traded in the last week. They've turned over. I bet you half of that two, 560 has already turned over. We're down to the last 280 or even less. And sooner or later, out of the last 280 million that are held by, however many are still held by entities like this I've just described to you, could be Middle Eastern investors, could be offshore investors, European investors, Asian investors. They're all over the world, leveraged to the max, looking for this big fat home run. A bunch of these guys are all leveraged with borrowed money and they're all getting their butts handed to them and they're all leaving because they're being told to get out. And um, something tells me they bought into this stock between here, 10 bucks, and all the way up into the 20s thinking it would go even higher because they were greedy. They, they never sold at 22, 24. They never sold it there. They were greedy. They thought it would go to 100 a share. Then they figured, well, I'll go to 50 a share. I'll definitely go to 30 a share. And now it's at 13, 19 a share. It's not delivering for these guys. And so they're getting blown out. And uh, we're gonna say goodbye to these people. You folks are being very generous, buying the stock off of them, saying, don't worry, I'll take care of your stock for you. It's all right, I'll take 500 off you, I'll take 100 off you, I'll take 1,000, I'll take 5,000 off you. It's okay, because I, as the buyer of your stock, uh, thinking you thought it was gonna go to 30 right away, I also believe it's gonna go to 30, and I'm prepared to wait. I'm prepared to wait for it to do so by taking you out here, and I'm gonna help it go to 30 by buying you out. And that is what's going on. The big turnover has been happening on SoFi. It's ugly and it ain't pretty and it ain't fun, but we're watching it and the volume speaks for itself that they're taking them out. So now we see how much more there's to go and how high it can go from there. When it does start to go, you're going to hear a whole bunch of them say, oh, I told you, I, I see, I was right. It, it, it did go to $30 a share. Yeah, well, you know, it went to 30, but it didn't take them with it because they didn't have the chutzpah, the dollars, to be able to stick around to, to enjoy the show. They weren't Warren Buffett's. They never were. They think they are, but they're not. They're flippers. They're over leveraged opportunists who get their butts handed to them because they can't, they don't have the plan to stick it out and invest and hold. They just, they're, they're not wired that way. So they move on to the next hot thing. I don't know what the next hot thing is for these guys, but it isn't so fine, that much I can tell you. 
So now we go to 2530, the old fashioned way. We grind our way up there solidly with a huge foundation at 12, 13, 14, 15 bucks a share. And we just systematically move her higher. As the company comes out with financials, growth and clients and customers, new services, higher revenues, new projections from analysts, and on we go. Is the company a takeover target? Yes. In my humble opinion, this is a takeover target. I don't know when the trigger is launched. I don't know when this becomes that kind of a play. It could be happening right now under our feet. We don't understand it. We don't realize it because we don't see it. There are no filings that I can tell you about that are indicating to me that um, new investors have stepped in here who have now become SEC filers. They have to mend it. Mandate, under mandatory rules have to disclose their situations. I don't I don't have that, but you never know. That could change at any time. Uh, the last filings I see are January 19th, December 30th, December 15th, uh, December, uh, November 24th. No news. Now, SoFi comes up with financials. We know they're coming up with their latest financials not too long from now, and that could change everything, uh, a lot of things. So we'll We'll see what gives. It could be a bunch of filings and who knows what. Anyway, there you have it. There's my take on things. I told you my rant was done. <laughs> I told you. Three minutes to go until we open. We're at 627 now. Uh, Larry is going to give us the uh, the news here shortly. Those of you who are going to join Jennifer and I on the class uh, for our class this Saturday, uh, thank you uh, for getting a hold of me. If you want to be part of the class this Saturday at 10 o'clock Eastern time live. Jennifer is the moderator. Um, you just need to send me an email. Say, Bruce, here's my email address. Bruce, I want to be in your class. Send me a registration. Um, I'll send you 150 bucks to your PayPal, uh, PayPal account. I want you to register me into the class. Send me a link to this class, please, please, please. Here's the email address that you need to send it to. Uh, th those of you who've already responded, thank you. A bunch you've already prepaid. It's all done. I got you locked in. We're set. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, we have a few more openings, and then we're done. Um, it's going to be a good crowd this week, and I'm really looking forward to the to the fun. The class this week is called "Using the Poor Man Covered Call Writing Strategy to S to Say Goodbye to Your Day Job to Quit Your Day Job." Um, if you are sick and tired of working for the man, and you want to be on your own, you want to be self-employed, or you're thinking, you know, I just need a couple years off. I, I just, I just. I, I'm 40, man. I'm burned out. I've made money in, the, in my 30s, and I've built up a bit of a reserve here. Um, I just need a break. I need to travel for a year or two. I, I just need to reload. I, I want to refocus my life elsewhere. Um, can I somehow, Bruce, can you help me somehow work it out so that I can make some cash on my investments that I've got by writing covered calls? And uh, maybe poor man covered calls. Is this the way to go for me? Um, show me this. Talk to me about this on Saturday. Help me to decide what my future is going to be. Those of you who are in your 50s and 60s and you're looking at your retirement account going, <laughs> I don't have a million dollars in there. There isn't going to be a million dollars in there. How the hell am I going to retire? You better be here on Saturday to hang out with us. I'll, we'll talk to you about how you can probably retire on way, way less than that. I mean, way less than that. Uh, join us and we'll get into that on saturday okay so uh, looking forward to it uh, uh larry we're going to get the bells from larry any moment now we're going to see how this market is going to work for us uh thank you all for joining me today let me move some wires around here i gotta plug this in i gotta unplug that i've gotta redo this i gotta reload that i mean i got stuff to do man i this is not easy uh it used to be a lot easier but those days are long gone we're about ready to start trading aren't we larry yes we are are the bells have been rung by Larry Tyson. If Larry rings the bells, we're open. It's as simple as that. I don't know what you guys are waiting for. We can start trading now. Let's see what happens with this market. We have a lot to watch, a lot to uh, wonder about, a lot to uh, 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 entertain us here. Um, all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, early, early indications are very positive for the market because we are overcooked. We're oversold way oversold. Is this a dead cat bounce? Is this a serious uh, rally? Is this a half a day thing? Is this uh, the beginning of a one week power move? 
What is it? We're going to find out very quickly in the next few hours what we're sitting on. It's Stock Markets with Bruce, where I try to explain the markets in plain English. That's all, that's all I'm trying to do. I, I, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel for you. I'm just trying to tell you in plain English what the heck is going on. Olivia, thank you for joining my channel as a, a Chilling with Bruce member and or re coming back in. It's nice to have you here. If you're a member of this channel, you can comment over here. Over, over here. You can comment over here. If you're a Gold Bagel member of this channel, you've reached the upper echelon. You now are eligible to comment over here. Join me before the 8.30 show that I'm just starting here with the uh, investor alert every day. The market's open. And you get to join me Wednesday nights. What's today? Wednesday. You get to join me tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time for Uncle Bruce Prime Time for Gold Bagel members only. It's a Q&A show tonight. Ask me whatever you want about your account, your portfolio, what you're doing, your option situations, what I think. What That's what we're there for. Uh, tonight, 8 o'clock Eastern time, become a Gold Bagel member. You will get your alert later today for tonight's show. By invitation only, Gold Bagel members can come on in. Thank you, everybody. Olivia is here. Thank you, Olivia, for joining us. Um, I need to save money for a bit. Uh, no problem, Olivia. I'm glad you're back. Uh, we love you. We missed you. Nice to have you here. And it's nice to see uh, everyone welcoming her back in here. A lot of women are here, by the by. Um, um, uh, just I want to make this clear. This channel is PG rated. Uh, we do everything we can to keep commentary respectful. I am so proud of the fact that we have a fairly substantial female viewing audience here because this business of investments is a male dominated thing. And um, the reality is there are a ton of women out there who need help with investments. They need to find and be appraised of what the hell is going on. And I'm really proud that this channel has attracted a strong female audience and it's still growing out. And I'm really proud of it. So all you gals who are here, uh, there are many of you who are who are who let us know you're female, but there are many of you here that are not using female names. I get it. I respect it. Um, it is the way it is. And so all of you who are here, guys, gals uh, from North America, from Europe, from South America, from Asia, wherever you're from, you're welcome here. Worldwide audience, I love having you here. Thank you for joining this channel as a subscriber or as, a, as a, a Chilling with Bruce member, or as a Gold member, you're all welcome to uh, enjoy the show. And, and uh, let's see what's going on. Let's see if we can make some money, OK? Um, I'm showing the Dow right now up 199. Uh, I'm showing uh, the S&P up 51. I'm showing NASDAQ up 282, early indications. So we're only four minutes in. I have oil up 95 cents a barrel. On the stocks that we follow the most here, I'm showing Rocket Lab up uh, 26 cents right now to 875. 104,000 uh, initial volume at the moment. I'm showing SoFi up 19 cents to 12.95. I'm showing a 12.90 low and a 13.23 high, with 3.4 million uh, processed so far. This is still all settling in. We've got GameStop at 101.30, um, a low of 190, $100.93, high of 102.58, volume of 105,000 so far. Uh, Matterport, $10.50 up. Uh, 1052 up 13 cents, um, 1.2 million volume with a low of 1049, a high of 1109. We're settling in here. I, uh, ME, 23andMe, I, saw, I read a very interesting article this morning on ME describing the history of the company and how far it's come. Very interesting. Up 11 cents uh, today at uh, $4.51, the low 450, the high 464 on 103,000 shares. ME is a super bargoon. Spire, 20, 225 a share, up 4 cents on uh, 5,900 volume. Just no selling at all. Uh, SPA, uh, ATIP Physical Therapy, 40,000 volume, 324 up 6 cents, 321 to 327 bid, uh, low to high. Smart Rent up 24 cents to 725 on 7,000 shares. Absolutely nothing for sale down there. Um, Sixtera, 1145 up 26 cents on 5,000 shares volume. Nothing for sale on Sextera. I'm waiting for them to announce 
anything. Uh, same with Smart Rent. Um, ATIP Spire, we're all waiting for their financials, latest updates. Uh, and we know, I know, every one of these stocks are oversold, way over, over, oversold. And that's why there's nothing there. There's no volume. There's nothing available. There's You want to buy some, you got to bid it up. It's as simple as that. Alberto is, uh, Alberto Bertie, thank you for this donation. I appreciate all of all of you who do this. Thank you. Uh, um, Boeing, covered calls. Thanks, so Uncle uh, Bruce, your idiot nephew checking in. Alberto writes covered calls against Boeing and makes money and makes money and makes money and makes money and makes money. He writes against American Airlines. He makes money. He makes money. He writes against GameStop. He makes money. He makes money. If you write contracts, uh, you can make a ton of money here. And that's what we're trying to do. Uncle Bruce is on a real rant, says Ben. He really is. He's on a rant. Uh, Olivia's smiling. Um, thank you all um, for you coming through here, uh, all of you. I haven't had a chance to read a single comment, really. It's just been me ranting away here. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, Bruce, I bought a Microsoft call option, says Jay Smith, at a 287.50 expiring Feb 11. Uh, I paid fourteen hundred for that contract, thirteen ninety five, just before closing last night. Do you think I should take profits for the Fed meeting today? Uh, Two eighty seven fifty on the uh, on the uh, stock. Wow, this is awesome sauce. Uh, we're at three hundred three fifty four, up fifteen dollars a share right now. Those contracts are in the money right now. Um, was that twelve fifty plus three fifty? So sixteen dollars in the money uh, plus premium. A uh, pretty nice situation. Um, well. Here's my take on it. Um, I think that the Microsoft shares, no matter what the Fed says, uh, are going to keep going higher because this company, it doesn't matter what the Fed does. Um, the Fed can raise interest rates. They can cut back bond purchases. Microsoft is going to keep making more money. Uh, uh, the official PE multiple at the moment is showing 34 times earnings. That's not true. I think it's trading more like a 26 times earnings. This stock can go back to 350 a share. It, not today but it'll go higher. Um, what you could do with this contract, however, is you could use this contract to write contracts against the stock. So you can you, you can do a poor man covered call. So this can be your call option. This could be your option that's an in the money call as the stock keeps rising up and you can write a call option against this, this uh, unit. So if you can bring in $500 in the next two weeks by writing maybe a a 310 contract, a 315, uh, give the stock a couple more days to kind of make its move here. You might be running 310, 315, $320 contracts, good for two weeks at a time, three weeks at a time, and take the premium depreciation coming into you. You can score a $500 gain every couple of weeks on this contract. All you need is three rights, three times. In six weeks, you get all your money out of it. It's now free. Uh, let the stock go to 320 a share. You know, you're, you're in the money uh, 30 250 whatever it is $35 a contract uh, your contracts a $4,000 contract and you're bringing in 500 bucks every two weeks 600 bucks every two weeks uh, 500 every 10 days easy money this could be Jay Smith your way to just score 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 on this contract now February 11th you can't go forever obviously because it will expire on you you may have to roll it over but then again, you know, you might play the game of, oh, I'll keep it for a week or so. I'll do a, a quick write right now, perhaps, or not. Maybe I'll sell it off for a profit, and I'll pick off maybe May or June contracts that are in the money uh, and use those as my poor man covered calls. This is a thought. Um, I'm excited for you. I, I'm, I think this is fantastic. Way to go, I say. Welcome one, welcome all. I'm glad you're uh, you're here. Uh, man, oh man, is it nuts? Uh, thank you to uh, to O B G Y N, <laughs> O B Wan <-Wan> Ganobi, <laughs> new member. Uh, what a name! Uh, welcome to the Chillin' with Uncle Bruce uh, Club. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> 336 thumbs ups have come in. Thank you all for those thumbs ups already. Uh, keep them coming if you can. The more thumbs ups we get, the more people will discover us through YouTube analytics. And the more people discover us, the more people will hear about us talking about our favorite stocks. And uh, they'll start following our favorite stocks. And that is one thing leading to another. Uh, that is a good thing. The Dow right now is up 232 points. S&P up 53, NASDAQ up 259. Those are the early 10-minute in numbers 
for these markets. The, the NASDAQ is up 1.8%, S&P up 1.1%, and the Dow's up 06 So the, the, uh, the NASDAQ market is doing triple the Dow market as far as moving up. There's your indication of what's happening right now. The money is flowing in to the, to the FANG stocks and the others. Um, and I can imagine that, um, that the, um, the, uh, the uh, uh, I'll get it out. I'll get, I'll get the word out. Don't worry about it. Uh, the Kathy Wood uh, uh, Innovation Fund, I am sure, is having a wonderful morning this morning, as my, uh, my hunch. Um, I will pop it up in just a second if I can. Um, Rocket Lab is up a dime. SoFi up 14. GameStop up 291 to 102.70. Matterport up 13 cents. ME up 9. Uh, Spire up a half a penny. ATIP up 4. Smart Rent up 17. Sixter up 6. Everything is up. Every single one of them is higher. Uh, AMC is up 15 cents at the moment. Robinhood up 24. Vanek up 660. Home Depot up 250. IBM down 223. We had a huge run to 137 yesterday that this could turn around and go higher. And then 140s and 145s might be the options to write on this stock. Over on ARC Investments, uh, the, the innovative uh, innovation fund for Kathy Woods, 7310 this morning, up 230. Uh, at the moment, it's been between 72.80 and 73.96. This bottomed out the other day at 64.98. Uh, this is seriously higher, and looks like it's going to go higher with the way this market is running right now. Uh, Microsoft is up 13.96. It's at 302.44. Very big reaction to the news that came out uh, uh, last night regarding uh, the earnings on Microsoft. They blew the doors off the, the earnings, uh, over, uh, over uh, delivered over analyst projections, and it's now 302. The high of the day, 308, the low 300. Uh, and I think Microsoft could easily reach 320, 330 in the next, say, week or so if this market wants to take it there, if it believes in its upside, I think it should. Microsoft has again delivered the goods. Now, Apple tomorrow, if Apple delivers the goods, then I can tell you that Microsoft will add to the, will get to the 320, 30 mark. If Apple delivers like I think it will, Amazon will take off, Facebook will take off, Google will continue to take off. This market could really be in for a shot. So far this morning, I've got Goldman Sachs up 333, Apple up 229, I've got Cisco down 64 cents, Facebook up 247, Amazon up 49 bucks, Tesla's up 23, Google up 37.50. We got gains happening on these markets. As I say, Apple comes in, watch out. Um, Google will follow, um, Facebook will follow, Amazon will follow. If the FANG stocks all deliver, as I suspect they probably will, we are on our way to several thousand points of movement here in the markets. Uh, this this will shift people's attention back to where they've been going the last three, four years, and they will get away from this notion that higher interest rates are going to hurt our markets. Uh, <clears throat> higher interest rates are not going to hurt the, the bank stocks. They are cash rich, uh, money in the bank, and they're able to... Uh, uh, they're able to just keep cashing in left, right, and center. Any of you, by the way, who want to join Jennifer and I this weekend is sending me this message. You're sending me an email message, which I've asked you to do. Please continue to do so. I promise you um, I will respond to you. Um, here's the email address. I will respond to you after the show. I will send you the invite so that you can attend our class on Saturday. Okay, so if you'd like to be here as a live participant of our class this Saturday, the class is called Using Poor Man Covered Call Writing Strategies to Quit Your Day Job. Uh, you want to say goodbye to your boss, say goodbye to that cubicle, say goodbye to those people. <laughs> say goodbye to those managers, say goodbye to those project manager, whatever they're called. I don't even know what the title of these people are anymore. You want to get out of that? Um, join us. Please, on Saturday, we're going to talk about that, and we're going to go into this, and uh, it's always a good time. Jennifer is the moderator. You'll be well looked after, and, um, and I'll be in front of the whiteboard, and away we go. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time this Saturday. It's going to last two, two and a half hours, kind of. You can you know, leave if you want, anytime you want. Not to worry. Here's the deal. If you do become a member of the class, 
uh, there's $150 charge to that. But here's what you get. You get to be in the class and ask your own questions to us. And after the class is over, we edit the class. We load it up on our website. It should be up there by Tuesday, Wednesday next week. And you will then get a link to the class, the edited class, and you can watch it anytime you want again and again and again. As a class member, you get an extra benefit of the free upload of the edited version of the class. So if uh, during the class you don't quite understand it or we didn't quite answer your question or you wanted to watch that again, don't worry about it. By Tuesday, Wednesday, you can watch it again and again and again. You'll get your link. So there you have it. I'm looking forward to all of you coming by, and I think it's going to be fun. Um, uh, OBGYN, I, I sent you a class yesterday, still waiting for a response. Um, if I haven't done it yet, I apologize. Um, maybe send me another email and give me this name. This Tell me your real name and tell me this name. Um, and then I'll know and to double check and make sure I didn't miss you. Okay. If, if any of you, uh, asked to join the class and you haven't heard back from me, just send me another email and say, Hey man, what's happening? I'd like to be in the class and I'll, I'll take care of it. We'll get on it. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Let's see what's going on. Uh, we're up 290 now on the Dow. We're climbing. We're up 57 on uh, S and P we're up, uh, 237 on NASDAQ right now. Uh, we've got uh, our favorites here. Rocket Lab up three cents to 352. SoFi 1306 up 30 cents. GameStop 3103.29 up three dollars and fifty cents at the moment. Uh, let me move into there. I've got Matterport at 1051 up 12 cents. ME up seven cents to 447. Spire down one half of a penny right now. Um, hang on, I'm trying to get my big ass iPad to work for me. There it goes. Uh, where am I? Um, ATIP up two cents to three twenty. Smart Rent up eleven cents to seven up thirteen cents up seven fourteen to seven fourteen now. Smart Rent moving higher. Sextera eleven twenty three up four. AMC up nineteen. Robinhood up twenty one. Vanic up seven fifty four. Uh, Home Depot up two sixty two. IBM is recovering only down one forty seven. The Dow up now three twenty uh three twenty points. We've got um, Microsoft up twelve twenty six to three hundred dollars. Apple up two bucks to one sixty one seventy seven. Goldman up six. Six bucks to three forty-seven. I'm thinking Goldman three fifty, three fifty-five. Then start looking if you're looking to write call options, a poor man covered calls on Goldman. Start looking at three fifty-fives, three sixties, and three sixty-fives. Either this Friday, next Friday, or the Friday after. Bring in some serious premiums on Goldman. Uh, Cisco up uh, down thirty-five cents to fifty-five seventy-six. Looks like looks like it's climbing here. Uh, Facebook up two three four two dollars thirty-four cents to three oh two forty-nine. Amazon up fifty bucks. Tesla up twenty-seven to nine forty-five eighty-five. Announcement tonight for earnings after the bell. Google up forty-seven forty-four to twenty-five eighty-two. Bed Bath Beyond down twenty-two cents. BlackBerry up nineteen. Royal Caribbean up. Two dollars five cents to eighty two twenty two. The higher this goes, the better a put contract gets to buy on Royal Caribbean. Unbelievable. Target down forty nine cents. J P Morgan uh, up three fifty four. Costco up seven twenty. Walmart up a dollar. Nvidia up seven bucks. We've got um, uh, let's see. American Airlines up twenty nine cents. Netflix at three eighty ninety up fourteen forty a share. DraftKings got a serious buy upgrade today. It's now at 195 to 2121. It's really come off. Moderna upgraded uh, by Deutsche Bank and others at uh, 462 up at 157.16. Moderna has been 153 to 158 today and it's climbing higher. That's a good sign for Moderna players. Um, what else is going on? DoorDash up a dollar, Airbnb up three, Micron up 250, Intel up 76 cents. They beat a court ruling in Europe, some kind of a $1.2 billion fine. They beat it, and Intel is moving higher. Coinbase up $7.67. Uh, Boeing down $3.65. AT&T up $0.02. Cents. They came out with uh, better than expected earnings and are doing fine. That is where we're at at the moment on some of our faves. We're up 400 now on the Dow. We're up 68 on S&P. We're up 272 on NASDAQ. We're climbing right now on the markets. Uh, GameStop, 104.08. Do not be surprised. 105 to 110 could be the neighborhood we could run to. 
if we can get closer to uh, through 104, 105, 106, 7, now look at writing 110s for Friday or next Friday or 115s for next Friday or the Friday after that. Uh, start writing calls for premiums if you can get your hands on them on your GameStop because it will fluctuate between 90 and a doll, 110 perhaps for a little while. You can take advantage of swings on the stock. Um, right now, Rocket Lab off a of nickel, SoFi up 27, GameStop up 426, Matterport 1064 up 26, ME up a dime at 450, Spires up a penny, ATIP is up two pennies, Smart Rent up 11, Sextera up five. That is what we have happening right here, right now. Lots of fun and lots going on. If you're new to this channel, you're probably noticing the commentary over here. Only members of the channel can comment on this uh, channel. Uh, it's a preventative move to keep trolls away. We do the best we can. It's not easy. Um, but a lot of members talk to each other here. You'll find that I will read a number of the comments, but a number of the comments that you see here are members talking to each other. One of the advantages of joining us, if you want to do this, is if you have a question about options or, or, or the markets or the stocks we're following, you can just post it here and you may find that you get answers from a number of the viewers who will begin to engage with you. If you're respectful to them, they'll be respectful to you. Thank you all of you who are here and helping each other uh, uh, figure out what's going on and where we're at with everything. I do appreciate it. Um, it's a, a ton of fun. Uh, lots going on and uh, never a dull moment. Rob noticed we broke 104 on the uh, GameStop just a little while ago. Um, Beach Boy also noticed it. Uh, Fitz, uh, like butter, went through 104 earlier today. Uh, we're watching GameStop closely, as we always do. Uh, we're also watching for Bank of Canada to see if they make an interest rate announcement today. Powell will talk later this afternoon uh, and see what's going on. Aviator, thank you so much. Thumbs ups for Bruce. I appreciate that. Z uh, Z Estate noticed. We went through 104 on that GameStop a little while ago. Uh, Brendan Dodge, I'm a noob. I'm a noob. I'm brand new here. Uh, welcome, Brendan Dodge, to the channel. I'm glad you're here. Hang out with this gang for a while. You will learn more about the stock market in an hour or two hanging around this channel than I think anywhere else because there are some really helpful people here who will engage with you. Just watch and learn, read the comments, keep an eye on the markets. You can use uh, marketwatch.com as your uh, stock market watching page. Uh, uh, if you subscribe to Wall Street Journal, you get to use Market Watch as part of that service. And you can build your own stock watch list, and have your favorites up there. You will absorb more in the mar about the markets here than I think anywhere else on the internet. And you can see it live as we are watching the markets. I'm live every day, 8.30 in the morning, one hour before the opening, and then two hours into trading. And then I'm live for the last hour of the, tra of the trading day to wrap things up. And um, this will help you absorb how and what is going on, hopefully in a plain English format. Um, thank you all for uh, bring it, uh, being here. Uh, Michael says, bring it, baby. Uh, welcome, Brandon. You're gonna be welcome by everybody, buddy. Nice to have you here. Welcome, noob. Have fun, make money. There you go. Uh, dear Uncle Bruce, the Uncle Bruce Index is green. Uh, closed yesterday at 745. It's now 752. We're going higher on the UBI. The Uncle Bruce Index of his favorites are climbing. Yay! About time. Uh, let's hope it keeps going. Uh, let's go. What else is going on here? Um, is this time for the top on GameStop? What's the story? 103.63, 384 gain on GameStop now, GME. Uh, the high of 104.20, that we're not far from that high, uh, 309,000, a little better than, you know, a dead quiet day. Uh, let's see if the markets want to keep running. Look at the Dow up 476 points, uh, S&P up 79, NASDAQ up 310. GameStop could easily get, gain another couple of bucks. Will it, though? There's the question. And what do you do? Do you write 105s for Friday? Do you write 110s or 106s, 107s, 108s, 109s, and 110s for Friday? Any of those. Do you write 110s for next Friday? Do you write 110s for the Friday after that? What about 115s or 120s for a month out? Are you going to take an opportunity to score some premium gains here and then look for shrinkage? 
Are you a little more of an aggressive player? And are you going to write GameStop 100s for this Friday or for next Friday or the Friday after that? Are you going to dare the market to stay up here? If you write 100s and bring in 10 bucks, you're selling for 110. We're at 103.40. The stock goes up to 105, 106, and you write 105s. Same thing. You're daring the market to hold these gains. And if it doesn't, it backs off five, ten dollars on a on a profit taking dip. You score on these contracts. There's a number of ways to play this, uh, conservatively or aggressively. Let's see what happens. Uh, Joanne is welcoming Brendan to the channel. Uh, tons of fun here. What is going to happen? What is going to happen? Uh, good morning, Uncle Bruce. Do you think they know something we don't know about what Jerry Powell is going to say? I don't think so. Um, I don't think so. Shrinkage, Jerry. Shrinkage. I was in the pool. I was in the pool. <laughs> we're looking for shrinkage. Yeah, we're looking for the George Costanza trade on contracts. We write them and then we watch them shrink. Exactly. Oh, so much fun. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for being here. I hope you're having fun. Um, trying to stay on top of a very active market. We're up 448 on the Dow. We're up 78 and a half on S&P. We're up 300 on NASDAQ. Lots going on here. GameStop, 103.47. The low of the day, $100.72. The high, 104.20. 149 to 104.20. We're at 103.36 right now on GameStop. We're up nine cents on Rocket Lab. We're up uh, 36 on SoFi to 13.12. We're approaching the high of the day here on uh, SoFi again. We got up to 13.23. We went down to 12.79. Now we're back to 13.10. 9.6 million on SoFi. The volume continues to trade there. Matterport up 17 cents at 10.54. ME at 4.57 up 17. Spire up 3. ATIP up 2. Smart Rent at 7.20 up 19 cents. And Sextera at 11.33 up 14 cents a share right now. That's what we got going on. Uh, the, the IBM was down over $2, is now down only 72 cents at 135.38. IBM is climbing again. Um, we got Microsoft up 12 bucks at $301. Apple 194 gain at 161.68. Apple reports tomorrow night at Microsoft reported last night and it was very good. Uh, this is a lovely 4% run on Microsoft. This is serious stuff. Every pension fund in the world, every hedge fund, all the mutual funds, they're all higher because of Microsoft's run, and it's not going to give it back. I think we're going higher on Microsoft. The worst might might be over, unless I'm missing something fundamental that I should know about. It looks like uh, Microsoft may have hit a bit of a low for a bit. We might be consolidating back into this 310.20 neighborhood. Um, Goldman up 7 61 to 349 a very nice recovery on goldman uh, in the last week we were down as low as 327 dollars a share if not even lower than that and we're now at 349 350 range so writing 355s 360s might be the plan for goldman contracts today expiring for friday or next friday uh watch uh, that closely uh, there's opportunities here on this kind of a run Fabulous. Uh, wow. Just doing the best I can. Simon Hall. Uh, Bruce, the, love the fact that you're just honest with your views and use your experience giving good advice. You're like a personal financial advisor saying it as it is. Thank you for that. I appreciate you uh, mentioning that. I do the best I can with what little we have. Welcome to uh, Summer Rose 88, a brand new gold bagel member right up there uh nice to have you here uh also 360 thumbs ups fantastic thank you so much for joining the group as a gold bagel member uh you'll enjoy these common areas and of course you get to join us every morning before my 8 30 show for the investor alert for gold bagel members and also wednesday night tonight eight o'clock prime time be there or be square. Uh, we'll have the open Q&A. I look forward to that. Um, thank you for joining in. Welcome. 
Cisco down only nine cents. Facebook up three. Amazon up forty-one. Tesla up thirty-two. Google up sixty-five bucks. The Dow up four forty-nine. Very good. Uh, we're up seventy-seven on S and P. Nasdaq up three hundred five. We'll see how long this lasts. We'll see what kind of a rally we really have. Those of you who are option writers, if you're here as an option writer, this is what you're looking for. You're looking for a run-up and you're looking to pick your spots. You're looking to write contracts ahead of these stocks so that you can score on option depreciation, time depreciation, the George Costanza effect. I'm in the pool. The shrinkage effect is what you're looking for. Um, and uh, you just pick your favorites. GameStop at 103.76. It looks like it wants to take a run at 104 again. Let her do it. Let the stock go. Let it go to 104, 105, 106, 107. Write 110s for Friday or for next Friday or 115s for next Friday. Stay ahead of the stock. Write calls and be there for the shrinkage. Um, 103.80 right now on GameStop. Matterport up 28 cents. ME up 19. Spire up 4. ATIP up 2. Smart Rent up 17. Sixterra up 20. These are some of the favorites we follow. Former SPACs that are not SPACs anymore and do not have to worry about SEC rules, about SPACs or anything else anymore. They're no longer caught in that web of crap. They have gone through this and are out the other side and these guys are more valuable today than they were last week. Why? Because they will not be caught up in regulatory snafus that all the SPACs who have not yet completed their deals, they're in a sea, a swamp of SEC crap. And thank goodness ours have gone through that. We're on dry land and we're on the other side. What else is going on here? Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, do, 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 do. <laughs> Coyote, I've had a change of heart recently. I was very pro working from home. I'm no longer, I no longer am. After three days of nonstop meetings, I long to be in the office so I can throw myself out the 10th floor window. Maybe you're working for the wrong outfit. Uh, maybe you're, you, you shouldn't be an employee working from home. Maybe you should be a consultant working from home and you decide what meetings you go to. Uh, maybe instead of being an underling, you should be an overling and be the overlord of your own entity rather than be a, 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 a grunt underneath all kinds of structure. I mean, it's bad enough being in a cubicle and having being dominated, now being dominated at home by these same guys. No, 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 no. That's not what you want to be doing. Coyote, start looking. Start looking. Oh my gosh. Anyway. Let's see what happens. Uh, fun, fun times. Uh, Rob is saying, Goody, just fill up your out Outlook schedule with fake appointments that you mark as you're busy so people can only book you for certain times of the day. I, I'm busy. I, I've got meetings. I have uh, I have, uh, I have, uh, a, a, a investment advisor meetings with Uncle Bruce. I, I can't be part of the meeting. I'm sorry. I'm very busy. Uh, we're at 10417 on GameStop. We're going higher again on GameStop. The high of the day was... Uh, 104.20 earlier. We're now 104.50, the new high of the day on GameStop. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Um, <laughs> Will, hey, Rob, that's pretty good stuff. That, that's pretty smart. Uh, fill your appointment book with other appointments that don't exist. This is pretty good. Uh, Summer Rose, I've been watching you since the infamous GameStop run. I'm your age, but I've only been an active trader since GameStop. Welcome to the to the channel, the gang. Uh, I'm glad you've been here all along, and I'm just really happy you're here. This is fabulous. Uh, uh, the folks here will welcome you, of course, and um, uh, love it. 104.54 right now on GameStop. We seem to be hitting 104.69. New highs on the GameStop. 104.80 looks like. So go, baby, go. Let's see what it wants to do. All right. Uh, what else is happening here? Uh, other stocks, we're now up 31 on Rocket Lab. We're at 880. Um, this is uh, near the high of the day of 885 on 378,000. Doesn't take much to move it up 30 cents a share. That's interesting. That's a very good interesting. Uh, SoFi up 39 cents at 1314. Uh, volume 10.9 million, 11 million volume. Uh, very good on SoFi again. Game's up 104.57 to 82 now, going higher. Matterport 10.78 up 38 cents. Volume 3.58 million. So uh, that's looking good. Um, ME up 27 cents. Bring it, bring it, baby. This is so cheap. 
362,000, um, uh, we're at the high of the day right now uh, at three, 468. Uh, we're at the high of the day right now on M. E. Uh, this is such a bargain. Spire, 228, up 7 cents. Go. ATIP, up 3 cents. Get going. Smart Rent, up 17 to 718. Coming along. Keep it coming. Sextera, up a quarter again. It jumped back up. It was up, down, now it's up. Up 25 cents to 11.44. The high of the day, 11.45 on 19,980 shares. Not even 20,000 shares. We're up a quarter it's going higher. This is going. There's nothing to stop this stock. It would just be so nice if they were to say something. It would really be nice. Ah, uh, anyway, Uncle Bruce, you were dead on about GameStop yesterday afternoon. You were dead on. Wavy gravy, Bruce. One oh six. That's what I'm showing. I don't don't know if it hit that. I don't see. I, well, maybe you're right. One oh five ninety four here. Yeah. Cool bean stuff. Go GameStop. Go. Those of you looking to write GameStop calls. Like I said, if you want to write 110s for Friday or for next Friday or 115s for next Friday, the Friday after, the Friday after that, write stink offers. Uh, you know what those are. If the, the market is 10 to $11, uh, put in offers at 1095. Don't offer it. Don't sell it at 10. Offer it at 1095 or even 1145 or 1190. Stay a 10, 5, 10 cents below a nice round number. And go on the high end of the scale. Make them come to you. You're the seller. You've got the contract. You want to come and buy it from me. Um, these things have a 50 cent to a $1 spread. Don't get sucked in and hit the bid. Don't be doing that. Don't give away $100 per contract by hitting bids. Take the $100 by offering at the high end and saying, come and get me, buddy. Come and get me. There you go. That's how we do it. Oh, we're having fun today. We're having fun. 316 on SoFi. Come on, SoFi. You can do better than that. We're up 41 cents. 317. Come on. Let's go. 11.3 million. And we need a breakout here. We deserve a breakout. Um, interesting day. Interesting market. It's green everywhere. How long? How far? How high? I don't know. We're happy to see the green. But, you know, we got to keep in the back of our mind the possibility that there can be testing of recent levels of resistance and support levels. So that's why you're an option writer. You're here to take advantage of swings. Don't worry if the stock keeps going up if you've written a contract. Don't worry about it. You can always do rollovers. We're fine. We're fine. The Dow up 426. S&P up 80. NASDAQ up 335. Good run so far. Microsoft 1359 on the upside, 30208. Apple up 282, reporting tomorrow. We're at 162.60. Goldman Sachs, 349.28, up 773. Cisco is on the break even line right now. Facebook up $3. Amazon up 53. Tesla to 957, up 38. Google up $74. We're moving on the fangs right now. We're moving. Uh, Costco up 11 bucks. Uh, NVIDIA up 10.75. Uh, we're moving higher. Netflix up $14. Moderna up 5.47. We've got green all over the place right now. All right. Go, baby, go. What else is happening here? Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Uncle Bruce, any idea and thought you could take care of DKNG? Can you follow that one? Um, haven't got time to watch others that I'm not uh, into at this point. Let's go, folks. Uh, can't watch them all. Stink offers. That's right. Stink offers and stink bids. This is the secret to making extra money on this market. Don't get sucked into market orders. Do not get sucked in on those, especially when the spreads are a mile wide. If the spread are two or three pennies, it's okay. But if the spread's a dollar, don't you get sucked in on sell, hitting bids and taking out offers. Uh, no, 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 no. You be the one offering just below the high end and bidding just below the above the low end with odd numbers. Oh, my gosh. Uh, what's going on here now? Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. Volume on GameStop, 477,000. GameStop, 103.50 right now. We're jumping around right now. Lots going on. Um, let's see. When talking about uh, writing covered call stink bids, do you mean high end but within the ask or just outside? Both. So if the market is $10 to $11 and you want to sell something, 
you offer it at, at 1090. So there's that seller at 11. You undercut them by a dime, 1090. Don't hit the $10 bid. Stay up there at 1090. You're the cheapest seller. Let them come to you. Uh, but if you think the market, you see the market moving uh, moving higher, like GameStop, and the market's 10 to 11, and you see the market going higher, why don't you offer it at uh, 11.45? 45 cents higher than the offer. It's now a 1011 market. You're offering at 1145. Because if someone takes out the $11 offer, chances are the market might go 1112. You're at 1145. You might be taken out there. And the next trade, if the stock does back off a little bit right away, might be back to 1050. And you sold at 1145 on a stink offer. And you're going, yeah, they took me out up here. I didn't sell at $10 when it was 1011. I sold at 1145. That's 145 in my pocket for every contract I'm writing. You want to be self-employed and not work for your boss anymore? You got to take those $145 hits your way five, 10 at a time. You're gonna write 10 contracts for $1.45 more each? That's 1,450 in your pocket, not someone else's. This is what I'm talking about. On the buy side, it's a 1011 market. You're putting in a 1010 bid. You're the best, highest priced buyer. You're the, you're the top bidder, 1010. You're not buying at 11. Oh, no, no, no. Come give it to me at 1010. And if you feel the market's going to go down, you put in a 960 bid or a 910 bid, a stink bid down here. You wait for the market to come to you. You are the reluctant buyer and you're the reluctant seller. But when you sell, you get your price. When you buy, you get your price. You add up these wins on the sell side, on the buy side over several months and you realize thousands of dollars are in my pocket, thousands are in my pocket by just do, using stink bids and stink offers. Yes, you can risk missing a trade. Yep, you can miss a trade, but maybe the trade wasn't meant to be. Maybe you weren't supposed to write that contract after all and sell it at 10 because it only went to nine and then went up to 11. You gotta be a stink offerer and a stink buyer. You gotta play hardball, it's your money not their money. It's your money. Get it. Get your share. When do we do rollovers? Says that uh, GameStop has to break 110, 115. Uh, then we'll talk about it. Right now, we don't do anything. It's too early to talk about rollovers at this point. What else is going on? Oh, we're having so much fun. It does depend on your expiration date as well, Zed. It does expire. It does depend on that. Mirko. Hi, Uncle Bruce. I just wrote uh, covered call. I just sold a covered call. GameStop 108 for four dollars. Expires on Friday. I'm looking for 40, 50 percent today. Rock and roll. So the stock's 103.46. You've written a 108. It's out of the money. You brought in four bucks. If the stock goes to like where it is right now, 102.22 right now, this thing wants to back off three or four dollars. You might be buying this call back for half the price in no time. Uh, there you go. Let's see what happens. Uh, what else is going on? I loaded up on SoFi, says British Shilling, but I'm not expecting big moves on the stock in any anytime soon. The charter has to be finalized, says on the investors relations. SoFi expects the acquisition to close in February. Well, that's coming up in the next week or two. It will all close down. All right. Uh, Larry Titus, clowns on the left, jokers on the right. Here I am stuck in the middle with you. Oh, yes, we are. Here we are. Here we are. Uh, what else is going on? Um, Rob uh, Zed, it's a 101 for Friday. You sold for six bucks. I wouldn't consider it unless the price is over 107. Right now, your contract's only worth like 275. Exactly, Rob. His contract is worth $2.69. Uh, he wrote. Uh, uh, he wrote 101s. It's only worth $1.79. Um, uh, Zed isn't doing a rollover. Zed is going to be buying his contract back for a nice profit because the stock's already giving him some downside. We'll see how this fluctuates. Zed, I don't think you're going to need to worry about a rollover. I think you can make money. Oh, are we having fun today? Welcome one. Welcome all to the show and to the channel. Whew, we got so much going on. Um, every burger is a nothing burger. There you go. Um, is it a good time to buy um, a put um, uh, on games? I'll, I'll mark my words in a couple hours after the Fed meeting back to the red. Uh, Brad, I, I'm not sure if what you're asking me for sure what you're thinking of doing here. I'm not exactly sure here. Uh, let's see. Um, the time to buy puts was week weeks ago. Uh, yeah, there's no no need to buy puts. I wouldn't be buying puts on GameStop right now. No, I don't think so. Um, let's see. Uh, we're at 102.74. We were at 102.65. 
Um, let's see uh, what else is going on here. Uh, da, 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 da. I sold GameStop calls for next Friday for eleven bucks. Looking for good gains, and I think you're going to get them. Uh, I really do. Um, let's see. I had a burger last night, says Coyote. Um, Zed, uh, Rob, do I buy it back? Uh, just sit back, my friend. If you got a stink bit in there for a nice cheap price, just leave it there. The stock gives you a little dip, you'll grab it. Uh, but I wouldn't worry about the stock running away on you. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Let's go. Uh, Nazareth, Rob says, Nazareth, ah, since that was you, I sold mine around 1075 around the, around the 104 mark uh, before uh, it did that little uh, pop. Let's go. Um, I got that stock song in my head now because of you guys uh, stuck in the middle with you. Uh, Test Donkey, I made $200 on GameStop today from selling a contract and buying it back. Look at me, Mom. I'm making money. This is what it's all about, taking advantage of swings. Uh, we are up 313 on the Dow, a little lower than the high. We're off. Uh, we're up 62 on S&P, and we're up 276 on NASDAQ. We're going to get these moves now, these fluctuations. The question is how solid and how deep is this rally that we started this morning, is this going to last a while? Has it got some oomph behind it, or is it going to run out of gas? Is it just a, a three-hour thing, a one-hour thing? Uh, is it going to, uh, you know, are we going to have this run, a little pullback, and then another surge? Uh, are we going to level off around here for a while, wait for Powell, and then back off, or stay level, or take a surge after? This is what we're all wondering about. This is why I try to get you to write calls on these up moves. You start writing calls and you sit back and see if the stock comes back to you. Um, we're up 13 on Rocket Lab to 862. SoFi 1311 up 35. GameStop 102.20, 102.32 up 253. Matterport up 28 cents to 10.68. ME up 24 to 4.64. Spire up six and a half to 27 and a half cents. ATIP down four cents to 3.14. Smart Rent 7.22 up 20. Sixtera up 19 cents to 11.38. AMC holding a gain of 24 cents at 16.24. Robinhood up 24 cents. Vanek Vectors up 9.59. Home Depot up 3.88. IBM Green now up 60 cents. We were down two and a half. We're now up. 60. <clears throat> Microsoft up 1160. Apple up 247. Goldman at 347.85 up 630. Cisco up a penny. Facebook up 192. Amazon up $37. Tesla up 35. Google up 63. Jumping around here. Uh, uh, Royal Caribbean up 80 up to 82.55 up 238 right now. JP Morgan up 340. Costco still up 10 bucks. Nvidia up $11. Still got gains, uh, but we have pulled back from the absolute highs of the morning. No surprise. That's what markets do. The question is, will it regather itself? Will computer buy programs step in here and jump on these markets to take them higher? This is what we're all wondering here. And then we've got the, the Fed chairman talking this afternoon. All right. Way to go, Test Donkey. He says, Bama Babe, making money. Yes. Uh, let's see, Kramer, Kramer said when Sixtera hits $12 for 20 days, the lockup will start. So we'll see what that means and see how that goes. Um, let's see, um, Rob is saying to Zed Estate, uh, yeah, I, I, I said stink bid in there for like two, three bucks and hope it's uh, the worst case you could buy it Friday for a buck if it's still at that price. There you go. Um, what else here? Um, Ah, Bruce, as long as you stay in the U.S., you should try uh, uh, Trader Joe's Everything Bagels. They are so good. I don't like the onions in the bagels. I don't like that. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Ah, uh, there you go. Uh, what else is going on? Is Kramer actually talking about CYXT, says Bobby? Is that true? Um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, Uncle Bruce, should I roll my 98 for this Friday? What do you think? Um, nope, I wouldn't. Um, I would sit tight until Friday. Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't twitch right now. Unless the stock wants to go to 110. Then you'll roll and you'll write, you'll probably write 115s or 110s or 120s for several weeks out. But no, no, right now you sit on the 98s. Uh, they're only 440 in the money right now. Uh, no, I just sit tight right now. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, you know, hold up. You're not an onion guy. I had you pegged all wrong. Oh no, I don't like onions. Uh, I like onions in very limited scenarios. Uh, I'm not an onion guy fan. Not in my bagel. Mm, no, 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 not in my bagel. 
no can do. Uh, where are we at now? Rocket Lab up 18, SoFi up 44 to 1320. GameStop 102.32. Jen, how are you today? Appears to be a green day today. It is a green day. It was green in the pre-market. It's uh, It started off green and it's still holding green right now. Indeed it is. Uh, lots lots happening in the greens. Uh, we got Powell talking later today because right. they have their two-day their two day, uh, you know, Fed meetings and then power. Earnings comes. come out this week. Well, some, uh, we've had a number stuff. already. Uh, Microsoft came out last night, blew right. the, the doors off. Come out this week. The fangs, yeah, the doors yeah. were blown off by Microsoft. Right. It's up four percent this morning. Yeah. Apple tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah, and we're, I'm expecting good numbers from Apple. That's what I'm expecting. Um, folks yeah. are signing up for the classes. Okay. Uh, they want to join us. Uh, they want to have you be, uh, they want to be talking to you as moderator. The and voice of the people. The word, the voice of the people. That's right. The voice of the people. So, uh, I'll yeah. Do, I get my voice going. Ooh. We'll do our voice exercises an hour before the class starts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how about that? There you go. People are asking me about onions. I, I, I don't know how this started. Uh, somebody told me that uh, you go to you should go to Trader Joe's booths, and you should pick up uh, some Trader Joe's everything bagels because they have the onion in there and they're just fantastic. And Jen loves love loves onion onions onion bagel. in bagels. I don't. I'm a sesame seed guy. I love onion bread. I love onion onion. She's onion. the onion girl. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. The, I'm not the onion guy. Yeah. And then someone said, "What about onion soup?" Uh, it's not like it's now we're going into soup. I mean, French geez. onion soup. You love French I onion soup. I do like French onion soup if the cheese is uh, plentiful. It's all about the cheese and the croutons. And it's broiled up there. It's really crispy up there. You got to do the cheese just right. Uh, then I'm interested. But I love onion rings from Pete's Burgers in Calgary. If you've ever yeah. been to Calgary, going through Highway Number One. You can't miss uh, Pete's because you got to go through Highway <laughs> Number One. You wonder where that big lineup is. You wonder, why all those people lined up? Let's <laughs> where, find out. Well, it's because they're buying Pete's burgers and they're also buying Pete's fries and the onion rings. I love the onion rings at Pete's Burgers, but I don't like onion rings elsewhere where they're really big and fat and they're really limpy. No, I don't like Never it. has uh, onion on his burgers. No, no, bur no onions on my no burger. No onions on pizza. No onions on pizza. No onions. No. You'll take the green onions sprinkled on top when I make the chicken fried rice. Mm -hmm. Those are nice. Those add a little something. A little, a little, but but not the raw onion. No. So uh, no. What kind of bagel would you like later? <laughs> well, there was an incident here yesterday on the air, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I was here doing what I do yeah, for you folks. You got, like, Lenties. I know. I just maybe it's. Is you it, have a pet llama? I don't, I don't know, know what's about. going. I don't know what's going on. I I I, I work hard, uh, you know, and and uh, and uh, Jennifer, you know, she's been helping me out here, bringing me a bagel so I can survive. Uh, because after all, I have to eat a bagel. I mean, eating a bagel on the air makes the stocks go up. At least that's so called. Uh, that's the uh, common knowledge. Um. Anyway, um, Jen didn't bring me my bagel until I was signing off yesterday, and. Um, uh, today we're all wondering just when will she bring him I'll his set an bagel. alarm. I'll set an alarm, she says. Yeah, uh, there you go. Uh, hey, uh, hey. What? Uh, you are eating it. <sighs> I got my I got my grapefruit here. And now she's eating the grapefruit. She's eating that. <laughs> Don't you have any of your own out there? Not yet. Not. I do you first, honey. You little prince. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lie. It's a lie. I do you first. Oh, yeah. I haven't even boiled water for my tea yet. I've got to keep my little man. <laughs> <laughs> lies, lies, <laughs> lies. Anyway, what am I going to have on my bagel today? I don't know. Shmia. Okay. We got Shmia. We do. We still got Shmia. This is our last one. We're on the last brick of Shmia that's from Costco. Right. That's it. It's been a it's month over. since we bought it, I think. And, well, that's because you buy the package of six. Honey. And I don't think they've had it since. Uh, maybe not. You can still buy it in the tub. Tub? I know. You open that tub, you got to portion it out and get it in the freezer. New York right City? <laughs> Picante sauce. <laughs> New York City? That's right. Okay, I'll do a Shmia. When would you like it? Approximately. <laughs> Ballpark. <laughs> well before the end of the show. Um, Today's show? 
Oh, today show? <laughs> Let's be very specific here now. Okay, so what is it right now? Where is your... Or we, we, we've been on an hour and 53 minutes. I have so it's seven. Let's say it's 730. Would you like it at eight? <laughs> How about the next 15 minutes? Or so? Really? Because because that will give me still 45 minutes of airtime after I have. It. Okay. But will you actually be ready for it after having the great? Maybe I should just take the grapefruit away. So, you know, you're, you'll actually enjoy it. When you she also it. hits. She also hits. Uh, just saying it, it's worse than this. You think he'd be nice to me because since I'm bringing him food. Well, you know, you I've know. had the hair in the bagel lately, and I've had the other the little, paper. The paper, the little paper in the bagel here lately. Uh, yeah, uh, Pete's Burgers in Edmonton and Red Deer, too. That's right. Yeah, They've expanded. That's right. They've, They've expanded. Yeah, uh, I'm with you, Bruce. Onions are the devil, says DQ. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Mike, uh, Mike says, I'm with you, Bruce. Onions are grass. Are gross. They're oh, gross. They're gross. They're gross. They're um, onions and red solo garlic. cup. The older I get, the more I like a good onion. Yeah, uh, see? 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 Uh, let me guess, Bruce, says BW. Let me guess. You're one of those people that only likes onions and salsa, or if it's something truly hidden behind the scenes and it wasn't cooked from now, from raw. Yeah, that's right. If you can't see it. I don't like salsa. I'm not a he, salsa. Well, he doesn't. I'm not a salsa guy. He's not a pico de gallo guy, because um, you know why. Uh, the, onions. the savior says tomato and raw onions on everything bagel is the bomb. Pair it with oh, yeah. a banana nut and cream coffee, a little sugar, and you're set. Specifically after hiking the Temescal Canyon in Pacific Palisades, after hiking oh. that, see there. Oh. See? That, that's a West Coaster. And a toasty uh, man. A you see, on you, top can you there. just imagine the savior in sandals and the long <laughs> robe in the West Coast? Hiking up the mountain, having the in one hand and an artichoke in the other. Savior, you are so you are so the savior, man. It's okay, it's okay. We need a savior, and I got one on this uh, channel. Shrinkage, Cherry, shrinkage. Uh, GameStop one hundred and two. We're shrinking. Oh God, I don't. Maybe. Oh boy. There's no good golf. I'm in such trouble. It's unbelievable. Oh man, this is worth the price of admission. Oh man, I'll tell you, I pay, I pay. Bruce, you called it. The stock's heading down. One hundred one eighty-seven. Hello, market's going lower. Let's see what it's got. You guys crack me up, says Baby Buffett. Um, oh, I get it. There's more buyers and sellers today. Ah. Uncle Dren, she's dropping the markets. Hair in the bagel. That's code for something. I know it. Pretend it's salmon. These two are the greatest. Uh, Rob, you said it. DQ, negative, laughing out loud. Uh, onion rings are, are, are what? Uh, are gold tier. I don't know what that means. Gotcha. Raw onion with the turnip greens, the best southern meal ever. No salsa. No salsa. No, no salsa. No. Real simpletons eat onions and like apples. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, Uncle Bruce, I have SoFi 12 and a half and $15 calls expiring in April. I'm looking for a good opportunity to get out of these in the next 30 days and just buy stock or options with a longer expiration. What do you think? Um, SoFi, 12 and a half, 15s. We're right on the precipice of greatness on this thing. We're so close. Uh, just hang on a little longer. Just hang a little longer, Samuel. Uh, hang on a little longer. Um, um, I have a GameStop 100 strike for 10 bucks for next Friday. Let's see, says Goyote. Uh Fresh onions uh, are I like, but not if they're dry and in the bagel dough. There you go. Um, oh, my gosh. Uh, GameStop 101.76. This is so much fun, says Zed. <laughs> 101.35. Oh, the option writer is watching what's happening here. Um, oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. Rob, is Zed uh, fun until it jumps to 110? Laugh although. Let's hope it goes to 98 first. Um, let's see here. No salsa? You live in Palm Desert. Yeah, I don't have to have, I don't have to enjoy it. You know, I don't have to enjoy the salsa to be here, you know. I can be an anti salsite you know. <laughs> uh, Oh, man. Uncle Bruce, you know, Cindy says when Microsoft came up with earnings last night, it took a dive 
down to just under 275 and it stayed for a bit that that thank goodness that it recovered yeah it didn't last long down there um, um ibm took a dive when it came up with the earnings the other night too and it's recovered higher hmm. oh man oh eating this grapefruit oh so good oh so good so good so good so good um flint creek soap company you remember when you called me a soup company <laughs> anti cell site that's what he is um yeah i just i just i guess another piece of evidence that uncle bruce never left creston green mountain gringo hot salsa at its best <laughs> oh man oh man i know what a what a garbage plate is i've had a uh, beef on what i'm not ashamed to say i've had utica club beer um uh, what email do we send class requests to please we'd like to be in your class if you want to be in my class send me an email right here this should be down below in the description but there it is right there bruce farmer at hotmail.com and uh <laughs> just say bruce want to be in your class <laughs> On Saturday, please, uh, please send me the registration info, and we'll get you the info you need, and we'll, we'll we'll get you the link to the PayPal account and all that, and you'll be all set. We'll set you up, and we'll get you in there. Um, fantastic, everybody! Um, I freaking love salsa, says Coyote. Um, uh, I met Anthony Hopkins after one of his hikes. Uh, not as unique uh, being in the same biology class with Leo DiCaprio, though, or the other time I ran across. <laughs> Spare, spare, uh, a good salsa is really something special, uh, Larry, because people love to say salsa. They love to say salsa. That's right. Oh, my ear. No tapping, please. Oh, my ear. Uh, garbage plates? Are, are you from Rochester, too? Uh, Delahode, I bought Tesla stocks. There you go. Where are we now? Uh, we're up 180 points on the Dow. We've given up some ground. We're up now 194. A little bounce back here. We're down. We're up 50 on S and P. We're up 247 on on Nasdaq. Nasdaq is up 1.8 percent. S and P up 1.1. The Dow's only up 0.55. Now the Dow's up 188. So we had a computer sell program. Now we're going the other direction. Um, GameStop 102.10 right now, uh, up uh, 231 on the day. The high of the day 105.94. The low 100. And one hundred dollars and forty nine cents. Rocket Lab is up a dime. SoFi is up twenty seven cents to thirteen oh four. One oh two fourteen now on GameStop. Matterport up thirty two cents to ten seventy one. Me up twenty three cents to four sixty three and a half. Spire up three and a half cents to two twenty four. ATIP down a nickel, down to three thirteen. Smart Rent up nineteen cents to seven twenty. Sextera up forty cents to eleven fifty nine. Climbing again. AMC holding a seven cent gain. Robinhood up fourteen cents. Vanek up eight uh, ninety six. Um, Home Depot up two forty. IBM down fifty one cents. The Dow up one sixty six. Microsoft up twelve bucks to three hundred. Apple up two fifteen to one sixty one ninety three. Goldman up two sixty nine to three forty four. Cisco down seventeen cents. Facebook three hundred dollars a share up seventeen cents. Backing off a little bit. Amazon up eleven dollars now, up nine eighty. Backing off. Tesla up thirty one. Google up sixty two, but backing up a bit. That is what's happening here on these markets. One hundred two oh five on GameStop. Backing up a little further. Six hundred seventy eight thousand on GameStop volume. DQ is saying to David in Pittsburgh, I, I've spent a lot of time in, uh, in UNY. Uh, oh, my God, garbage plates in Rochester. I haven't won, haven't had one in years, says Arico. Garbage plates. Um, let's see. I love those garbage plates, says DQ. <laughs> says David. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. People are talking about garbage plates. All right. Um, the Dow up 194. Is that true? Let's double check. Right now, the market is up 188 on the uh, the Dow. We're up 50 on S and P. We're up 251 on Nasdaq. New home sales surge higher as supply shrinks. Headline just came out. Oil trading at 87.14, up 154. GameStop 102.06, 102.03 right now uh, at the moment. High of the day 105.94. That's where we're at right now. 
101.94 on GameStop. If it goes lower, you buy your calls back. If it goes higher, you write calls. It's as simple as that at the moment. Uh, SoFi 1304 up 27, Rocket Lab up 7 to 856. Matterport holding at 1073 up 34, ME at 465, just under the high today of 469 on 570,000, ME up 20, 25 and a half cents roughly. Spire up three and a half, ATIP down a nickel. Smart rent at 719 up 18 cents. Sextera 1158 up 39 cents. The high of the day, 1160. Volume, 44,950 shares on Sextera. Looking very good. That's the dealio here, guys. We're watching these markets and to see where they're going to go. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, I didn't know I had so many Uncle Bruce friends around me, says David. And um, I'm selling my beanie babies to buy the dips. Times are hard. Um <laughs> I know, Emils. I know. Um, uh, sup, says ni nice. What's up? Okay. Welcome, one, welcome all. We have 360 thumbs up so far for this show, and I appreciate this very much. If any of you out there could do uh, the ultimate favor for me, uh, we have 560 of you watching right now. Could you folks hit the thumbs up button? Let's get us through 400 and push towards 500. If that is possible, let's get some thumbs ups going and get the show a little more exposure on the YouTube analytics systems out there. Thank you all for hitting the thumbs up button hard. I appreciate it. Uh, 415 now. I'm showing 415 thumbs ups as my machine slowly upgrades and updates. 421 thumbs ups. They're coming in. We're going for 500 as soon as possible. Thank you all so much for stepping in here and whacking that thumbs up button. Let's get this market going higher. We got one way to make it happen. We got to hit the neat emojis from Monty Python here. Neat, neat, neat. The Knights of Knee. You do not get in the middle of the markets when the neat emojis start to show up on Bruce's chat room. Those of you who are members, uh, regular members and gold bagel members, hit the neat emojis. And that will move the markets higher yet again. You cannot stop markets. When the neat emojis come flying out, there's DQ. Already got them flying in here. Will Carruthers has already got them going. Here they come. The neat emojis. Wavy gravy. You can't stop this. Larry Titus Coyote. Beach Boy. The onions are tasty in Israel, he says. Ah, oh, Beach Boy, thank you. I'll take your word for it, man. Unbelievable. Thank you for the 30 shekels. Oh, man, oh, man. Mirko, uh, we've got neat emojis. Nelson, we got him. Hockey Rink has got him going. We have neat emojis. Vernon Edwards, they're showing up everywhere. Thank you, all of you guys, for the neat, neat, neat emojis. One after the other, uh, Samuel, the Knights. We are the Knights who say, Nee, that's right. Don't get in the way of this market. Trading up says, Nee, Nazareth, Nee, Nee, Nee. That's right. You can't stop this market when this happens. They just go higher. Uh, GameStop, 10170, though, it'll go lower for you option writers. Uh, 10165, 10154 on GameStop. Sell my house fast in Upper Marlboro. Nee. Neat, Nazareth, neat, neat, Aurora, neat, neat. You can't stop this market. You can't. It's going to go higher. People are going to make money. Oh, we are working so hard here for everybody. Zeta States, neat, neat, <laughs> neat, shrubbery. I demand shrubbery. Michael, neat, neat. Thank you, everybody. Um, thanks for the knee break. <laughs> so much fun. Oh, never a dull moment. 10182, 10157 on GameStop as it fluctuates. And those of you who write options are cashing in. Those of you who written options a few days ago, you're noticing shrinkage, the George Costanza effect. Time is running out on this Friday's GameStop contracts. And that's exactly how things work here. Thank you, one. Thank you all for being here today. Thank you for those of you who have uh, sent in um, uh, requests for the Saturday classes. I will get to you after the show is over. We will send you invites so that you can be part of the crowd. 
and away we owe. Um, Chris Zito, same thing. We'll got we we'll got you. We'll get you. Uh, we'll get you uh, into there. We'll send you a notification um, whether you send an email to uh, me direct or through my website. We'll get it figured out for you all. Uh, thank you for uh, for uh, uh, writing to us and uh, joining the party, pal. It's great to have you. We're at 446 thumbs ups. We're only 54 away from 500 thumbs ups. Thank you for the neat attack. And please hit those thumbs ups right now, please. Appreciate it. Rob is saying the 100 I wrote this morning. The GameStop 100 I wrote this morning is up 14%. Let's go. There you have it. 101.56, 101.33 on GameStop. Uh, that GameStop is only worth uh, $1.46 right now. Uh, H. Gregory, thank you for the knees. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you all. Thumbs ups now. 453. We are 47 away from 500 thumbs ups now. Uh, they're coming in fast and furious, and thank you for getting me to the 500 mark, 456, 44 to go now on the thumbs up meter to hit 500. Uh, every little bit helps, helps. The faster we get to 500, the better to give YouTube a heads up that there is a channel here people should be joining. If you want to know how the market works in plain English, get your butt over to Uncle Bruce and watch those shows. And uh, check out the knees, uh, the knee attacks as well. Uh, thank you for those of you who let me know. What is your, num your number? Uh, Sil Sil Silica is number, thumbs up number 453. Let me know what your number is as you hit that thumbs up button. That would be great. Thank you very much. Um, let's see what's going on. Um, uh, Nisa is saying, I, I prefer the sesame bagel versus plain immensely. More flavor. There you go. I, that's what I think. A, a well-toasted. Sesame seed bagel is the way to go, I think. Uh, 467 thumbs ups, only 33 away from 500 thumbs ups. They are coming in 101.39 on GameStop right now, at 12.98 on SoFi, 8.52 on Rocket Lab, 10.64 on Matterport, 4.67 on ME. Spires at 2.24, ATIP 3.11, Smart Rent 7.22 and Six Terra up 38 cents to 11.57 just under the high of the day of 1160. The Dow's up 160, Microsoft up $11, uh, Apple up 240, Goldman at 345, 45 up 390 right now. Facebook up 61 cents, Amazon up $8, Tesla up 28 and Google up 67 bucks. Right here, right now. 26 away from 500 thumbs ups, 25 away now. We're at 475 thumbs ups, guys, thank you. Thank you, and I thank you. Fabulous. KC, I'm number 456. Tiff, I was number four this morning. Beautiful. My GameStop stink offer did not get hit this morning, says Vilbas. We keep watching it. Um, Gaiotti, it's already the third time I write this contract this week. Um, um, let's go. Vilbas, too stinky for this market. Gaiotti, Rob, nice. You're killing it, man. Trying to get into that same mindset right now. GameStop 101.54, 101.50, um, Dow up 163, S&P up 46, uh, Nasdaq up 234 um, right now. This is what we are watching, 101.33 on the GameStop, up $1.54. A little bit of a pullback coming through here at the moment, uh, watching all these markets do their thing. Lots of stuff going on everywhere thank you all of you uh thank you munamo for all these thumbs ups that you're showing off here uh we are at 480 of them now we're only 20 away from 500 thumbs ups on this show thank you everybody for uh, for helping us out um what else is going on here Arico, i just closed my gamestop cover call so i could take advantage of the bad news looming terrified to write anything under 120 haha -ha. Uh, well, you know, you make your money, do what you can. 10109 right now on GameStop. It looks like it's dropping a little more. Uh, uh, still up a dollar thirty, but it is backing up now. 194 just broke the 101 barrier on GameStop. 100 dollars 83 cents. The low is 100 dollars 49 cents. We're now at 183 and falling. Okay. 
uh, what's going on here? Um, you know, you uh, J- the Savior says, you must know if you do break fast by eating anything with raw onions, do not expect any kisses for at least 16 hours. Rob says, happens all the time. I tried to stink offer last night on this 100, and I didn't, it didn't hit, but I'm happy it didn't because I sold it for more this morning instead. There you go. Gaiati, Rob, you're going to try to buy this thing back before the Fed meeting. Uh, Munamu purchased eight more shares of SoFi. Right on, uh, Nice. Uh, Savior, the longest I fasted is five days with one banana. Um, H. Gregory, I'm patiently waiting to buy back my 95 strike rollover from last week. Should have done it on Monday. H. Gregory, I'm thumbs up 482, Bruce. We're at 486 now. Thank you, everybody, for those thumbs ups. Uh, let's go, let's go. It's Ryan says, we're going down, uh, $100, 39 cents on GameStop. We're at the new low of the day, 131, $100, 31 cents was just touched through the new low of the day on GameStop. All right. Coyote Rob, 100%. Thanks, man. Right on kids. We are watching lots going on here. The Dow is up only 90 now. The Dow is only up 90 points. S&P up 35, NASDAQ up 192. A little bit of a pullback coming through here on this market right here, right now. As we watch this market go through its gyrations, GameStop $100.54, now $100.39 as we're jumping a boot. Oot and a boot. Yeah, yes, yes, we are. Uh, and here we go. Pick Nose is saying probably will roll out tomorrow or Friday. My GameStop 103 for 128. Cover call hasn't fluctuated enough for stink bids to hit. Uh, it's Ryan says get, getting ready for the Fed. Julie, uh, Julia, uh, thank you for this donation. Hi, Uncle Breeze. Two questions. Will Spire get delisted? No. And why is SoFi not moving on bank charter news? Um, SoFi is under pressure because hedge funds who funded SoFi at $10 a share. This is my opinion. They funded this company at $10 a share on pipe financing to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars, are using SoFi currency, the stock of SoFi, to sell it, to pay off debts on all kinds of other positions they have, including all kinds of derivatives, is my opinion. I think a bunch of hedge funds are in serious financial trouble, and they are selling assets to cover losses no matter what it is. And I think SoFi assets, which are up, $2.87. They bought this stock at 10 bucks. They're making money on it. They're selling this stuff to take care of other losses, but they will soon run out. And when they run out, the stock goes higher. That's my opinion. There you go. Uh, Let's go. Let's go. What else is going on here? Uh, We've got the Dow up 102, Dow up 97, S&P up 37, NASDAQ up 199, GameStop $100. 56 cents to 71 cents, somewhere in that range. The low trade of the day on GameStop, $100.31 just a couple of minutes ago. That is where we're at right now. Okay. Uh, Let's go. Let's go. So, SoFi won't start reaping the financial benefits until they can borrow money as a bank. Should be in the next week or two. That's all coming together. It's all been proved. It's all going together. It's all good. Um, let's see. Uh, what else is going on? Um, the Charter News bumped so far from 14 to 16, but this market is, is so gross that it didn't last long, clearly, says Gaiotti at the moment. Um, $100.72 on the GameStop. Uh, so far, 12.84. Rocket Lab, 8.44. Uh, Matterport, 10.40. ME, 468, Aspire 224, ATIP 310, Smart Rent 722. Do you have any napkins? Yeah, I do. Oh, uh, we you. have a bagel. Thank you. Yeah. A shmia. A shmia on a bagel. Covered bagel. Look at that. Ooh-wee. I don't see any hairs on it either. This is great. Thank you. I so chopped them up really fine. Now she's grossing <laughs> me out. Now she's grossing <laughs> me out. Oh, the evilness of it all. And she's the moderator. Yeah, and people want to join us. Oh, no. That's right, she said. I'm in such trouble. Uh, cheers, everybody. It's bagel time. Mm, mm, mm. Fantastic. Mm, mm, mm. So good. So good. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Mirko. I just bought back my GameStop 108. It's expiring this Friday, 233. I sold it for four. 
It's a nice return in 38 minutes. Nicely done. I just saw Jen. The hair is hidden underneath the shmeo. <laughs> Jen, where are the onions? Uh, where are the onions? 10104 on GameStop right now. Mm, mm, mm. Fabulous. Mm, so good. The Dow is up 118, S&P up 38, NASDAQ up 198. Rob, says Merkel, nice job. Nice little right. Um, <laughs> DQ, Beach Boy, Jen uses onion shampoo. It's in the hair. Um, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Rob, Bruce, you may want to turn the camera to the face of the wall on your left a bit. When Jen walks in, we can kind of see her. Uh, Gaiotti, GameStop, consider the following a $99. Thanks. Uh, thank you for the advice, guys. I appreciate it. We're, uh, you know, we're constantly uh, battling that. Thank you all. Um, we're up 141 on the Dow, up 38 on S&P, NASDAQ up 197, oil up 171. GameStop is a doll, 10137. So it's a dollar higher than where it was just 10 minutes ago. Little little recovery. Mm, mm, mm. We're down three cents on Rocket Lab. We're up eleven on SoFi. We're up one fifty six on GameStop. Matterport unchanged. Unchanged on Matterport. Mm. We saw her on Monday, six more weeks of winter. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, this is the uh, this is an onions and plain English channel there. <laughs> oh my. 101.41 on GameStop right now. <laughs> oh, man. Dow's going up. 168. Mmm. Mm, so good. Shmeal. Mm. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Yeah. There we go. Lots to watch here. Okay. GameStop 101.23 coming back just a little bit. One hundred one ten on GameStop. Matterport down, Rocket Lab down a penny. All righty.
Folks are comparing notes about options, how they're doing. That's one of the advantages of being a member of this channel. You can talk back and forth about what's happening out here. $100.96 on GameStop. Broke the 101 barrier. $58, quickly dropping here. <laughs> the high on the GameStop today, 105.94. <clears throat> right now, one hundred dollars eighty six cents. The low, the low trade one hundred dollars thirty one cents. So we're closer to the low than the high, of course. Our volume on GameStop now eight hundred seventy five thousand. Fun, fun. Did you talk about the Tesla? We picked it up the other day, um, and we drove it back. We're about we, we drive about twenty miles towards LA to a supercharger, and we meet our we meet our guy there because he's he's agreed to bring the Teslas out so we can do the swap the swaparoo with them. And so we now have a, a Model uh, Y that at a hatchback version. The SUV version of the car, um, uh, very nice. Um, it's it's just as fast as a Model Three. It's really fast. Um, it's a single engine. Um, this one is a base model, but boy, is it quick. We're getting a, a dual engine model in about two weeks for most of February, and that that one I'm quite interested in, in uh, enjoying. We'll see how that one goes. The um, oh well, the GameStop is at one hundred one thirty one. We're up a dollar from the low. Um, the computer systems identical to a Model Three. Uh, very sophisticated car handles great. Um, nifty, nimble, really good handler. Fantastic car. Mmm, so good. This big, oh man, this is great. Um, Jeff, nice stink bid to buy back half of my 104s just filled right now. Why do people keep uh, scheduling meetings during market hours? Maybe I do need to take the Saturday class. Oh man. Spire wants to push higher. High of the day now. I'm just trying to debate which Cisco calls to write right now. Spire, 229 and a half, up eight and a half cents right at the moment. Down moving higher. We're up 217. Mm -mm.
Mm. I'm trying to stay green on a bunch of stocks. Oh. Oh, that is so good. Mm. Red Solo Cup. My buddy who would never drive a car like a maniac can't get enough of the 0 to 60 on his Tesla. He drives it like a 16-year-old. Then he remembers he's messing up his Tesla driver rating, laughing out loud. I find that I get to a red light, and I'm the first in line, and there's two others in, in line. All I like to do is I, around here, the, most of the major avenues here, they have about a 50-mile-an-hour speed limit. I like to get right up to that 50 mile an hour mark as quick as possible. Not that I hit the floor with the accelerator, but I accelerate nicely. And then I hit the I hit the cruise button to stay right at 50. So I get to the speed limit and I stay there. And then about 30 seconds later, everybody catches me because <laughs> they're all speeding. They all go 55. Well, by the time they catch me, we're at the next red light. And then we come to a stop. And then uh, here we go again, and I go, I take off, and no one, no one's faster, no one. I have yet to have someone take me out. Uh, not that I've been drag racing, but folks just don't have a chance against Teslas generally, unless it's a Tesla. Thomas wants to know, Bruce, what time is the Saturday class this week that you're doing? Uh, Ten o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. That is New York time, ten in the morning. So if you're in L.A., it's 7 a.m., get up early. If you're in um, Chicago, it's probably 9 o'clock Central Time. If you're in the Mountain Time Zone, I guess that's Denver, it will be 8 o'clock. And if you're in L.A., it's 7, okay? So 10 a.m. Should last about two, two and a half hours. Okay. People get addicted to their Teslas. Oh, I can see why. I can sure understand why. Um <clears throat> have you ever, uh, this isn't a Tamarca question, but have you ever considered doing a dual stream on YouTube and Twitch, a sort of simulcast situation? You could get more exposure to a wider audience. Um, I've looked into that uh, years ago with my other channel as well, my my, my uh, Traveling with Bruce channel. And I have in the past done dual casts on Facebook. Um, but I find that... Um, um, I have such a specialized audience because I'm in such a specialized field of the market talking about writing call options. So I, I, I'm really, I've narrowed you guys down here. Um, um, I just, I just, I don't, number one, I don't have the inclination. I don't have the energy. I don't have the stamina. I don't have the drive uh, to do all this other work. Um, uh, call me lazy if you want, but I'm just six, I'm 66 and it's just too much. Um, and I'd rather just zero in on what I'm doing now and just do it as best I can, limit the, uh, the bandwidth requirements and just focus in and, um, you know, add the website, which I've done now, add the classes, which I'm doing, um, and have the memberships here and honor your, you viewers who are paying to watch me work with you and for you and, and just. Don't diversify out too far. I, I just can't do it. I, if I had a, a an army of assistants, uh, then that could be done. But there, that costs money. So now the channel has to do double the volume just for me to make just as much money because I've got double the expenses. I, I just try to keep it really simple. Travel the world if possible with Jen. Do this work and leave it at that. So ah, I'll do the best I can. Um, what can I say? Um, uh, let's go. Zero to 50 is reckless, says nice. <laughs> Doesn't that wear out the tires faster? I don't skid. I don't, I don't, uh, you know, <coughs> jackknife the car. <coughs> Bottom line, it's not my car. I'm just renting it for now. Uh, lies. You know you drag race on the strip, Bruce. Accelerate swiftly. There it is. Uncle Bruce drag racing. What a show that would be. Bruce is lazy. That's right. 
You are far from lazy, Uncle Bruce. No, I'm lazy. I completely get that, says Coyote. You can't spread yourself too thin. That's the problem. I am. I, I just can't do it. I've looked into Twitch. Uh, I looked into um, simulcasts. I looked into. I've been approached by endless entities, um, and I just, I just am not able to keep spreading myself any further out. I, I'm just, I'm just exhausted. Uh, I sleep like a log in the most evenings. I'm just, I'm completely exhausted. Um, and I want to have gen time. I want to have time from when friends and our daughter comes here. Um, I just, I just uh, want to have a bit of a life and uh, stay on top of these markets and, and do the best I can with what I have. So I have to give up certain situations, but you know, you, you just, you can't do it all. You just can't. And uh, if I were 35, I'd have much, much more but I'm not, and um, and I'm just kind of going, hey, man, I'm doing what I'm doing, and it's great. It's a lot of fun. It's enjoyable. Uh, you guys are fantastic. The markets are the markets, and uh, I've got my hands full. I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm a busy guy, and uh, I just found out from my daughter last night that in the mailbox that I have in Calgary, I have a mailbox for anything you want to mail me, 14 letters have come in. <laughs> she says, Dad, we're going to talk today. It's mail day today. I'm going to open these envelopes with you. I'm going to do a face. We'll do a face FaceTime together. And you can see all this mail that's come to you uh, that I'm picking up for you. So I got that to do. I got, oh, it just uh, doesn't end. Uh, look at the ME, 23 and Me. Have you noticed that? 477 up 37 and a half cents. Look at it run. It just popped up there on 744,000. There is a really good article today on CNBC about Google, uh, about uh, about uh, 23andMe. It's a really good article. I, I, it tells you about the history of the company. I really like it. Um, the stock is moving uh, at the moment, uh, 477 and a half. Uh, high of the day on 744,000, 476, 477. Love this. Anyway, I'm 36 and I'm lazy. Uh, there you go. Butta, butta, butta. Um, uh, you can just mention in the description that you only answer uh, YouTube comments. There you go. Um, yeah, I don't even allow comments on my videos anymore for this channel because of the filth and the hate and the ugliness of trolls. Uh, I just don't have time to fight them. I used to allow comments and then I would get all of these uh, Im imposters who were pretending to be me and would try to reach out to you guys. And I just am not intolerant of that. I'm not a fan of that. So I, I had to shut that down. And thankfully I did. And that's reduced my stress level dramatically because I used to use an hour a day just deleting um, and blocking uh, haters an hour a day just on the comments now i don't allow comments i just i just can't be bothered um so i'm so grateful for that i'm grateful that that option exists so you know i limit the commentary to what's coming through here and try to make it as you know as productive t a time as possible because i really want to talk to you about the markets your stocks your options your you know try to help you make money that's what i want to talk about uh, but I, I, I have to occasionally do this other stuff. Anyway, there it is. Um, Bank of Canada made an announcement. Does this mean anything for us, Uncle Bruce? Um, and here we are. Those are spam bots. YouTube is awful at removing them. I know what you mean there. Bank of Canada. Um, <clears throat> what's happening with the Bank of Canada? Have they uh, have they made a change in interest rate policy? Let me take a look. <coughs> um, Bank of Canada holds benchmark interest rates steady again. So it looks like they have not changed. They are expected to raise its rate multiple times this year, uh, but they have not raised bench rates today. So the Bank of Canada has not raised interest rates today, uh, which means they are not ahead of the Americans on raising rates. That's a good sign for the markets. Uh, it's a good sign for you guys uh, who are following the um, U.S. markets because if Canada doesn't raise rates, that's another reason for the U.S. not to raise rates either. We'll see how this goes. Interest rates are on hold, but looming hikes are out there. We'll see. All right, Bagel Gang, got to work. See you in the uh, power hour. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Rob, uh, GameStop going to have a little run up here. Maybe time to write a covered call if you haven't yet. 102.43 on GameStop. Rob might be on to something. If it takes a little pop, 
You might be able to take advantage of another right. We'll see what's happening. San Jose, California, to require gun owners to carry liability insurance. Why would that be great if every city in America did that? Every town, every county, every state. Get rid of these 14-year-olds uh, with AK-47s. Oh, my gosh. Um, of course, I'm just a Canadian. I'm not an American. <laughs> don't don't want to do it. What can I say? Trudeau has more printing to do. Damn it. GameStop. Laughing out loud. Don't know if GameStop will have much to it. 102.52 up 272. Uh, now 102.35. We'll see how this plays out. Uh, time will tell. The Dow is up 300 points. Uh, S&P up 58. NASDAQ up 251 right now. Um, let's see. In Canada, Walmart, Costco, and other big box stores in Canada begin enforcing vaccine mandates. And some shoppers aren't buying it. We have anti-vaxxers in Canada, and uh, every family's got one or two or three. And there are all kinds of upset people in Canada, those for and those against, just like everywhere else. We're just as screwed up as every other country. It's incredible. Um, GameStop, 102.50. The Dow's up 317. S&P up 61. NASDAQ up 261. We're climbing on the market again. Another up move. We'll see how much there is to it. This could be in reaction to partially Bank of Canada because it is the USA's neighbor. They're not raising rates in Canada. Uh, if the U.S. raises its rates, we'll see, but um, maybe it won't happen. We'll figure it out. Okay. What happens, is not sure if this has been answered yet, but what happens if Powell does not announce a rate increase as expected? Markets go boom to the upside. <clears throat> There's no way he's going to announce a rate increase today, Powell. Nothing. That's not on the table. He's just going to talk about what they talked about, about the possibility that there might be rate increases later this year and whether they're in a hurry or not. I suspect they're not in a hurry. I suspect he's rather interested in talking rates higher rather than doing it. And he just wants to assure the market, I'm here to raise rates if necessary quickly if I have to, but I'm also here to not do anything if necessary if I have to. So that might calm things up and the market could go higher, but that's uh, we're a long way from knowing that. Okay, it's Prime Time Wednesday tonight. That's right. It's Prime Time Wednesday with Uncle Bruce. Uh, Fourteen-year-olds won't carry insurance. That's right, but their parents might have to. And if the kid doesn't, the parents are liable. Oops, uh, mommy and daddy got a problem. The little kid left the house with an AK-47 and started popping off the gun. Oops, uh, mommy and daddy got a problem. Uh, yeah, mommy and daddy got a problem, all right. Uh, we're going to see how this plays out. I have no idea. I'm... I don't even want to know. I just don't know. Um, let's see what else going on here. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, we're at 10303 on GameStop, a little higher. Uh, an opportunity to perhaps write contracts. Let's see what kind of momentum this has. Time will tell. Uh, in Canada right now, there is a there's an um, a, a protest going on. Canadian government has announced that if you want to be a trucker and you want to cross the U.S. border from the U.S. into Canada, like you're a Canadian, and you drop stuff off down there, pick stuff up down there to bring back to Canada, you cannot cross the Canadian border unless you are vaccinated as a trucker. Well, a whole bunch of anti-vax truckers are upset, and so they're mounting a protest to drive across Canada <coughs> from the West Coast, Vancouver, all the way to Ottawa, and uh, it's getting all kinds of press coverage. And I don't know, 86% of Canadians are disgusted uh, because there are, they are vaccinated. Um, and they're just looking at these truckers going, you guys aren't vaccinated? Get out of your truck. Stay home. Don't even come to my house. Don't come to my store. You guys are just super spreaders. I don't need this crap. What can I tell you? We have the anti-vaxxers in Canada, just like in the U.S., just like Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Sweden, everywhere. It doesn't matter. We got them. We got them, got them. Uh, let's see what is going to happen here. You're not vaccinated? Get the truck out. There you go. Uh, 103.46 on GameStop. Uh, 103.49, a little more of a move. I don't know how much the move will be for GameStop, but there is a little move here. The high today, 105.94. <clears throat> an up move is an opportunity to write contracts. A down move is an opportunity to buy contracts. So, 
Let's see what it's got. Uh, show us what you got, GameStop. Uh, we'd love it if you went up to 110. That would be great. 993,000. We have not even hit a million shares of volume yet. The Dow is up 317. S&P is up 62. NASDAQ is up 271. Oil is up 179 a barrel. That's what's going on. Who knows what we were going to see here today. We're up $0.08 cents on Rocket Lab. We've got back to a positive. We're on SoFi. We're up $0.22 cents to twelve ninety eight. We're back to a positive. Volume on SoFi, $21.5 million. GameStop, one hundred three fifty eight up three seventy eight. Matterport, ten forty one up two cents. It got down to ten twenty two. It's now ten forty one. We're plus two. Um, ME four eighty one up forty one cents. This is the high of the day range here. Four eighty one, four eighty two and a half. Eight hundred thousand volume. ME is moving. This is a five percent gain. Do not ignore this. Uh, something's happening on ME. Spire up 12.8 cents to 233. It's moving. 8 TIP still down 6.5 cents. Smart rent moving up. 742 up 41 cents. Six tear up 34 to 1153. We have an update here on a bunch of our stocks. Now, AMC is up a quarter at 1628. Robinhood is up 15 cents. Vanek is up nine bucks to 273. Home Depot up 380 to 362. IBM is down two cents. Dow Jones, uh, Jones up 335. Microsoft at 300 a share, 1230 gain. Apple up 310 a share, a moving higher. Goldman up again, 348.49. 349 now up 730 or so, 740. Cisco. Green up 27 cents, finally. Uh, Facebook up a dollar, back to the green. Amazon up $23, back to the green. Tesla up 31, going higher. Google up 85, going higher. We have an up move happening on a lot of this market, and that's why these indexes are showing better performance. <clears throat> we got the Dow up 310, S&P up 62, NASDAQ up 275 uh, right now. GameStop 103. 83 inching a little higher right now. ME 484 and a half up 44 5, 44 and a half cents on ME. A very good gain here. 485 now, 45 cent gain on ME and 233, 234 on Spire. Just a little better on those guys. Okay, there it is. There it is. There it is. Um, what else is going on here? Um, Mm -mm. Here we go. The truckers are the only ones my husband checks every day at the border. I don't need him bringing that crap home again. There you go. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. You know, when you deal with them, you have to. You might get caught. You might get the. Uh, you might get the disease. Um, <clears throat> there seems to be minor resistance at 104 on GameStop, but a harder resistance around 105 and a half. If it can break it, the next level will be 110. On GameStop, 103.80 though is where we're at right now. <clears throat> we're up 401 at the moment. Uh, ME 485 and a half, a new high. Uh, 486, a new high. <clears throat> 912,000 on ME. It's going up. It's going higher. Uh, Spire 234 looks like it's at near its high of 235 on 260,000. Those two are improving right now, little by little. <clears throat> and ATIP a little better off, only down 4.1 cents. It's coming on. Smart rent 740 now, uh, near the high of the day of 743 on 200,000. It's going higher. And Sixtera is hanging around its high of 1160. Right now it's 1156, up 37 cents. Looks good. Definitely improving. Uh, 104.23 on GameStop, a little higher again. Uh, I am a trucker. I'm a truck driver with a dedicated route from Kansas to Oklahoma every day. Love listening to Uncle Bruce every day. Moon and moon. I love you, baby. Glad you're here. And all the truckers who listen to us, <clears throat> you guys are the backbone of the economy. I sure hope you guys are vaccinated. I sure pray you guys are vaccinated. Man, you guys deserve the best. Um, Gayote, 1 million on GameStop now. Rob, 104.17. I got 104.38. I wish my 860 stink bid had hit. Could have wrote another one. Gaiotti, I swear, every time I write a covered call, every time, 104.38, 104.14, we're jumping around right here. Matterport, 10.47, up 8 cents. ME, 4.85, 4.86. Spire, 2.35, up 14 cents. 
SoFi up to 13 again, back to 13 on SoFi. Rocket Lab 860 up 11, improving again. The Dow up the th is up 310, S&P up 61, and NASDAQ 272 right now is the gain. <clears throat> All right. What is happening here? Uh, oil down is up two bucks to 87.60. Uh, GameStop 104.48 up 4.69. Um, let's see. SEC transparency recommendation approved, says Aviator. Um, Gaiotti, uh, then write a covered column matter report for me, please. Uh, Bobby, nurses and truckers, last year's heroes, this year's villains. Uh, well, you know, there's some pretty good people out there that are truckers and nurses, but. Uh, you know, it is what it is these days. Uh, it is a wacky world in which we are living. Um, 483 on ME, 235 on Spire. Let's go. The Dow is up 312. S&P up 60. NASDAQ up 273. Thank you again for these thumbs ups. We have 515 thumbs ups while I was chewing my bagel. You guys put me over 500 thumbs ups. Thank you again for getting me over that number every day. You seem to be able to do it for me. I appreciate it. If any of you are watching on the rerun, please hit the thumbs up button and get us over six or seven or 800. Um, that really helps this channel get noticed and discovered by millions of potential viewers that should be here enjoying the fruits of the labors of these stocks that we love following. Let's see what happens. Anyway, thank you all so, so much for uh, following me and, and being here. Those of you who are interested in being in our class this Saturday, let me know by sending me an email and saying, Bruce, I would like to be in your class this weekend. Send me the registration materials so I can uh, join up. We'll get you that just after I finish this show this morning. Um, and we look forward to having you join us Saturday morning where Jen will handle the moderation uh, duties fantastic and we're going to have fun 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 trying to educate ourselves the uh, the uh, lesson is known as um uh, using the poor man covered call writing strategies to quit your day job yes say goodbye to that boss and all those other people those project managers those vp of whatever they're called uh, general managers uh, presidents uh, Director of Communication, whoever you work for, whoever those people, those tyrants that are making your life miserable, you want to get away from these people and be on your own. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, writing uh, poor man covered calls might be your ticket to get away from situations that you've been in for far too long. And uh, you could move up the ladder uh, on your own, work from home, be your own um, boss. You could do that on one of these. Poor man covered calls. All you need is one of these. You do not have to sit at home all day long to be a poor man covered call writer. You are mobile. You can travel the world if you so desire to. It all depends on how you want to do this. Sell everything and just become a nomad. Uh, sell a house and just rent an apartment uh, and, and or travel from there or sell everything like jen and i put it in storage get rid of most of the crap you don't need anymore and then be nomads uh wherever you want to be nomads at get an rv and live out of an rv uh travel america north america in an rv who knows what you want to do 105 47 on gamestop go gamestop go um uh, it's up to you uh join us saturday we'll tell you all about it and uh, we'll go over all kinds of possibilities and uh looking forward to seeing it it's gonna be a ton of fun Thank you, everybody, for uh, for uh, joining me already today. Uh, we will be on again this afternoon at uh, 3 o'clock as we uh, finish the last hour of the day here. Um, so much fun coming up. Uh, thank you for a great show. Uh, see you all this afternoon. Says Joanne Hubs. you got it, Joanne. Um, I've been saying, uh, come on, Bruce, for weeks, and it seems like you're finally coming on. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Um I'll get off the air so I can do some work, please, God. Uh, there you go. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh 105.5, uh, 104.94. Um, let's see. Uh, I, I've worked over for a decade. I've moved up the stepladder. Uh, moment of truth. Um, there, there was a lot of memes about this, if I remember right. Um, uh, I've worked over a decade, and I don't know what a ladder is. <laughs> uh, 
Oh man, I just sold the next covered call games at 105 this Friday for 520. Right on. There you go. 10489. If this covered call ends badly for me, I think I'll give up for a few months, says Coyote. Uh let's see. Um Jan 30 here, brother. Uh let's see what else is going on. Um been a good time, says Red Soul. Look up. Um, Beach Boy, Uncle Bruce, I wrote 13 GameStop 110s February 18 for 10.05 and 12 um, uh, 105 February 11s for 11.05. I hope you like. Right on, man. 110s and 105s uh, uh, for uh, for the next uh, little bit here. Right on. Bringing in money and uh, daring the market to come and get them. Daring it. Like it. I like it. Way to go. Um Let's see here. Uh, what else? Uh, looks like I got rejected at 105.5. Catch on the flip side, says Chicago. You know it, buddy. Uh, Mirko, you're doing it right, says Rob. Uh, yes, sir. Appreciate you. Best of luck in life, says Cheddar. Uh, GameStop, 105, 104.88 right now. Uh, sounds like Uncle Bruce would come to an end to have a good break, y'all. Uh, Savior, at my 10-year anniversary at work, and they finally awarded me with the keys to the bathroom. I'm winning. I'm winning. I can go to the bathroom instead of a bucket. Yay. Oh, here's a brush. Now you can clean the bathroom. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, oh, my gosh. The Dow is up 351. Um, hanging in there. S&P up 66. NASDAQ up 289. The question now will be, one, can the Dow hit a new high today or not? If it can't hit a new high, will it falter? Two, what about Powell and his comments? Will the market like it, then not like it, or not like it, and then like it, or not give a crap over the whole dang thing? Could we theoretically have a market that on its own doesn't care what Powell says and is just going to peter out later today and hit a low and go down today? Could it be we're down 200 points at the end of the day after this little rally and there was a classic dead cat bounce today? I don't. No, that's why we're here for the last hour of the day to follow this. Vilbus, I just sold GameStop 110 for next Friday for 685 bucks. There you go. Uh, let's see. 105.04. Uh, let's see what happens. Uh, time to perhaps write covered calls on GameStop. <laughs> Stocks at 104.88. Take advantage of these prices. Uh, lock in some dollars here. <clears throat> right either 105s for this Friday or next Friday or 110s or 115s for the Friday after that or the Friday after that and dare the market to come to you. Dare GameStop to come up and get you. If it does, it does. But if it doesn't, that con those contracts will depreciate and crap out. It's George Costanza time. Uh, shrinkage, I was in the pool. Oh, my goodness, goodness, goodness. Um, Fun, fun times. Beach Boy, way to go, buddy. Uh, let's see what happens. 104.88. Uh, we're up 509 on GameStop. The volume on GameStop, <clears throat> 1,175,000. That is really thin, really quiet, hardly intimidating that this is going anywhere. Uh, there's just no volume here. Uh, ME 486.87, a high of 488 now on ME up 46 cents on a million. Uh, 23 me is definitely moving higher. Uh, Spire 238, <clears throat> high of the day up 17 cents on 282,000 shares. Looking better too. Um, go ATIP down four. Smire, smart rent at seven forty, up thirty nine cents. High of the day seven forty three. <clears throat> six Terra, look at the six Terra. It's eleven seventy four, up fifty five cents on six Terra. That is improving a seventy eight thousand volume. Very interesting moves here. Um, GameStop one hundred four eighty nine. At the moment, um, that is where we are at right now. The Dow up 370, uh, S&P up 67, NASDAQ up 292. That is the deal. <clears throat> Let's see what happens here with this uh, market. Um, Mallow, I'm, I'm thumbs up number 530. Uh, sold GameStop 105 for February the 4th for 860 bucks. I wrote a contract, a 105 which is 26 cents out of the money for $860. That's like demanding $113.60. You're telling them you, you want me to lose money? You got to go over $113.60. I dare you. 
I dare you between now and February the 4th to do that to me. I dare you because I can roll over if I have to. I don't, you might not do it. You might back off back to 100. Maybe you'll back off to 98 and I'll buy this contract back for three bucks. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, Nicholas, I'm five, I'm 531 and thumbs up 531. I forgot to thumbs up this morning. Forgive me, Uncle Bruce says Nicholas. Thank you, Nicholas, for jumping in there. Appreciate these thumbs ups now. <clears throat> We're at 532 thumbs ups. <clears throat> Please keep them coming in, everybody. Thank you very, very, very much. Oh, we're having fun today. Uh, interesting, interesting markets right here. 104.82 on GameStop, 104.74. Uh, people are writing calls right now on GameStop, defying that market, daring it to go higher on them. So far, it's not happening. It's a little better, but it's not a lot better. We'll see. Uh, Matterport down nine cents to ten thirty. Me four eighty six to four eighty seven now on Me. What a day! Two thirty nine up eighteen on Spire. This is the high of the day. Two dollars thirty nine cents on two hundred eighty four thousand. No news, but it's going up. It is going higher. Uh, Me definitely going higher. Looks like it wants to go to five, maybe beyond. <clears throat> well, let's see what it wants to do. We're we're more than happy. Uh, Sixterra eleven seventy one up fifty two cents. Another good day there. Rocket Lab eight sixty eight up twenty. SoFi up thirty to thirteen oh six. One oh four sixty three. One oh four ninety six on GameStop. We're jumping around a little bit here, just under the one oh five mark. Looks like we broke it. One oh five twenty nine. There might be some of you being able to write calls on GameStop. You might have some of those stink offers coming your way, which would be great. If you can keep writing GameStop covered calls for some big money between this Friday, next Friday, the Friday after that, I would do it. I would take the dough and defy this market to take you out. I don't know if that can be done. We'll see. Uh, we always hope it goes to 120, 130, 150. We hope, we hope, we hope. But we'll see. Uh, 105.29, 105.30 right now on GameStop high of the day 105.98 was the high today. The low 131. Uh, so this this range is five dollars and sixty seven cents. This is a nothing burger. This is a nothing burger of swing movement on GameStop. Uh, it's almost uh, you know almost dead quiet here, <clears throat> but we're watching it as we always do and we will. The Dow right now up 372. It has to break through 550 600 to hit a new high. I don't know if we will hit a new high of the day. That could be technically bad. We'll see how this plays out. We're up 362 on the Dow. We're up 69 on S&P. We're up 302 on NASDAQ. If we don't hit a new high on the Dow here on another rally, we could be set up for a drop later. We got the 34,815 on the Dow. We're at 34,653. We are a ways off of the high, 150 odd points away from the high of the day. We got to break 500, uh, 500 something on the upside. I don't know if we're going to get that. Uh, IBM up a dime. Microsoft still at 301. Apple at 163 up three. Goldman 348.72 up seven dollars seventeen cents. Cisco went positive. It's up twenty one cents. Uh, Facebook up one sixty nine. Amazon up thirty seven seventy. Uh, Tesla up twenty eight ninety. Google up 88 bucks a share right now. That is where these markets are at at the moment as we are watching lots of stuff simultaneously going on. GameStop 105 even. Uh, 105.14 looked like for a little bit. 105 even at the moment. We'll see how it wants to fare. The Dow uh, holding 359 on a gain, 67 on S&P, NASDAQ 298. Here we go. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is taking aim at curbing junk fees from banks. That's good for consumers like you guys out there. That would be really good news. Uh, SEC regulatory blitz begins with proposals to tighten rules on hedge funds, private equity funds. That is good for shareholders, retail shareholders. That is really good news. A disclosure would be one really good thing to get. Like, are you short GameStop? How many shares did you short on GameStop? We'd kind of like to know that information. We'll see if that comes out or not. 105.08 on uh, GameStop, 105 even on GameStop, depending on which quote you trust. 
and we'll see what happens. 338 is the gain on the Dow, uh, 64 on S&P, NASDAQ 294. We seem to be backing up just a little bit, a little bit of profit taking coming in. We're backing off a little bit on the markets. 104.98 on GameStop, just saw trade under 105. Zed is saying, Beach Boy, GameStop, 105.10, man, 105.10. Well, we'll see how it goes. Uh, never a dull moment. Uh, the Dow down again. 312 is the gain right now. NASDAQ only up 283, both backing up a little bit at the moment. 307 on the Dow right now. All right. Well, you know, we're here. We're here to cheer. We're here to watch. Uh, 105.08 to 105.80. Uh, we might be moving up a little more on GameStop. That's fine. Uh, some of you are going to get more contracts written bringing in some cash, and I say do it. Bring in the money. 105.96. Good, good, good. The Dow down up 342. S&P 65. NASDAQ 293. <clears throat> the, the, the game's up 105.96 right now. Up uh, New high of the day was 106.03. We touched it, uh, so we're now at 106.05, new high in the day for GameStop. Uh, now 105.94, 106.05. So a little better on the GameStop. That's good. That's good. That's good. Let people get some writing done for nice, fat premiums. You can write 105s, 100s. You can write 110s, 115s this week, next week, the week after, week after. Here you go. Better than writing 85s, 90s, wouldn't you say? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. Uh, writing 110s, 115s, 120s. Yeah. 106.04, 105.94, somewhere in that neighborhood is where we are right now on GameStop. The high of the day, 106.14, last at 106.04 to 7 right now. Dow is up only 305. We're giving up ground. 59-point gain on the S&P. We're giving up, giving up ground. NASDAQ, 274. We're giving up ground on the big markets right now. I can only shrug my shoulders, this guy. I can only shrug. Uh, ATIP, 313, says Nice. Uh, ATIP, hmm. Rob, just remember, we still have time on our side. That's right, we do. Uh, ATIP, 313, still down 5, 6 cents. Spire, 235, up 14. ME, 480, up 40 cents. Uh, we're having a good day over there. Um, 105.67 right now on GameStop. We seem to be under 106 at the moment. Mm, let's see. Uh, Rob is saying the volume isn't crazy. Um, no SSR. High chances it comes back down on the uh, GameStop. Um, let's see. Every time Uncle Bruce does overtime, I think he has dishes to do or is just hoping Auntie Jen does them. Uh, let's see. Coyote, yeah, Rob, yeah, that, that is specifically why I went out to next Friday. I have really bad luck with writing lately. 105.85 on uh, GameStop. Looks like it's backing off just a little bit. Beach Boy laughing out loud. I did it too. I did it. I am all ale. Um, I so want, I want to make sure I had time, says Coyote. I want to make sure. 106.40 just jumped up again, though. Uh, GameStop is jumping around here. 316 on the Dow, <clears throat> up 62 on S&P, up 281 on the uh, on the uh, uh, Nasdaq. <clears throat> and Rob, yep, yeah, 106.39 and a half right now. 106.29. We are jumping around all over the place. That is the deal right now. Folks, thank you for joining me today uh, and being here today. Hopefully, you're getting in some option writing on some of your favorites. Um, look to see if these markets can hit new highs during the day or if they falter, will they go lower? Uh, right now, the Dow is not hitting new highs from this morning's highs. We're faltering. We're only up 310 on the Dow. That is not good. Um, we'll see what's going on. 106.4799. Um, anyway, there you go. Beach Boy Zed, did you write covered calls as well on GameStop? 106.50 right now on uh, on uh, GameStop. 106.50, 59, 106.68, a little stronger. Good. I uh, like to see the stock go up. That makes you guys richer on paper. And you still make money on options no matter what. So uh, let's see what the dealio is here. Uh, we're here to watch it. We're here to track it. We're here to uh, keep an eye on it. 107.15 on GameStop. Go, baby. Go, baby. Um, uh, T-Jack, hi, Uncle Bruce. I'm thumbs up 195. I have 200 shares of GameStop at 155 each. Does that mean I should not write covered calls below 155? No. You can write covered calls anytime you want at any price you want for whatever you paid for the stock. If you own the stock, it doesn't matter what you paid for it. 
and I would not hold myself back from writing covered calls just because I paid more for the stock than it's trading at. No, if you want to write one tens for expiry on Friday or next Friday, go right ahead and take the money right now and uh, sit back and the shares back off, you'll make money. Shares stay level, you'll make money. The shares go to 110, 12, 13, you'll still make money. If the shares want to go to 120, 130, you'll just roll over and, and buy back the 110s and write 130s and 135s. Make money writing contracts all the time. No matter what you paid for it, it makes no difference at all. All right. It doesn't matter, says Vil J Vil J Vilbus. <clears throat> there you go. Zed, uh, Beach Boy. Yep, 101 GameStop expires this Friday as per our hero, Uncle Bruce. Gaiotti, <clears throat> Phillips, I've written four contracts this month. The last three have all caused GameStop to run after days and days of red. Rob, it's 108. Yep, 108. 37. Uncle Bruce says roll if it hits 110. And if it goes to 120, I'll be a broken man. Uh, you'll just roll. You'll just roll. You'll be fine. Uh, booyah, says uh, Beach Boy. Booyah. 108.38 right now. Uh, 108.23, 108.06. Let the stock do its thing. It's okay. It's oversold. Let it take a run. Uh, you know, the goes to 108, 109. Great. 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 Right 110s, right 115s for a couple weeks out. Take the money. Yes, indeed. Let's see what it wants to give us because um, it. you know how this, this stock goes. You know what it can do. We've only had an $8 range on it now uh, from 100 to 108 anyway. 108.88, uh, yeah, but, you know, if it goes too far too fast, it'll back up. So you know how this works. Fun times, uh, we all say. Let's see how it wants to run. 109.30, go. Go. This is exciting. It's fantastic. I love it. Let's go, GameStop. 1.4 million. Let's go. We need a lot more volume than that. 109.15, go higher. Go get going. Make my people richer. Come on, man. 109.15. Hopefully, you guys are getting options written. I'm hoping you're getting options written and you're bringing in cash on your GameStop. Bringing in cash. 108.93 right now. Bring it in. Absolutely. Um, uh, Beach Boy says to Zed, are you the master of your domain, I assume? Uh, are you still the king of the castle? Uh, uh, Beach Boy, GameStop power to the neat. There you go, 106, uh, 10860 now on GameStop, 10848. Uh, Lord of the Manor, says uh, <laughs> <Beach> Boy. <laughs> 10860, 10870 right now. That is what's going on. Some, some fun we're having. 368 on the Dow, uh, 359 now, 70 point gain on SP, 309 on NASDAQ. Uh, GameStop, 10861 to 10870 right now. Uh, have a good day, Bruce, says Nice. Uh, GameStop is a rocket. Uh, bro, okay, okay, I see you later, folks. Time to actually do some work. Good good, good luck, everybody. 108.56, last trade on uh, GameStop. Uh, ME479, Spire, 237.5, ATIP 311. Uh, Smart Rent, 738, up 36 cents. And Sixtera, 1176, up 56, uh, 57 cents on Sixtera. High of the day, right here at 11. 76, the high of the day. The all-time high on Sixtera, um, all-time high, 1279. We're only a dollar or so away from an all-time high on that stock. In this market, very good. 108.80, 108.83, and <clears throat> Dow now up 352, uh, S&P up 69, and the NASDAQ 307 points uh, at the moment. That is where we're, uh, we're doing it. Uh, that's where we're at right now. And uh, Zed, I'm Beach Boy. I'm waiting for the shrinkage. That's what I'm waiting for. Vapor Rub. I'm thumbs up 553, and I'm writing Beach Boy. You need a coffee table book. There you go. <laughs> thank you for 555 thumbs ups, everybody. Uh, Beach Boy, thank you for hitting those uh, neat emojis. Love that. Um, thank you all for being here today and and being with me and hanging out with us, uh, Jen and I appreciate you so much. 556 thumbs ups. We love it. Um, looking to see how this market wants to work itself out. Um, GameStop is flying, says Beach Boy. 109.12 right now. 109.33. Let's go. Let's go. I haven't seen 110 in a while. That would be nice. Uh, we're up 346 on the Dow. A little slippage here. 69-point uh, gain on S&P. A little slippage there. NASDAQ holding a 306, 307 range at the moment. Um, Z Estate, 109.10. Neat, neat. This is what happens once I write, I'm cursed, Zariko. I'm cursed. 
Don't worry about it. Uh, this gives up 10 bucks like that. Not to worry. Anyway, there you have it. Matterport down a nickel. Gives up 109.69, 109.84. Trying to break into the 110 neighborhood. And it touched 110.21 a moment ago. Um, here you go. I'm very good at making option gamblers richer, says uh, Guillaume. Have a good night, says Nice. Uh, Munamo is smiling. 109.38 last trade, 109.71, um, GameStop, uh, the Dow up 3.45. Bye-bye, bank manager, says Beach Boy. Goodbye, bank manager. Out eco, ha, ah, exactly. And uh, we're at 109.31, 9.52 gain on GameStop. Um, high of the day so far, uh, 110.21. Uh, that is the high, and we're now at 109.56. And the Dow is up uh, 344, uh, S&P up 68 now, NASDAQ 307. We seem to be flatlining on the indexes, maybe a slipping just a little tiny bit. 109.13 on GameStop. We've given up a dollar on this little pop we just had to 110.20. Just a little pop, and it didn't hold, it didn't take, but we did get the print for a moment. There might be another, we'll see. Uh, time will tell. In the meantime, I'm going to pack it in. I will be back at 3 Eastern with the last hour to go. Cheers to all of you around the world who are joining me here on this channel, Stock Markets of Plain English with Uncle Bruce. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for upgrading your membership to Gold Bagel member level right there. Thank you for becoming members and subscribing to this channel. Thanks for the thumbs ups today, all the momentum that you're helping us with. We appreciate it. Four, 562 thumbs ups. We're going to be at 600 in no time especially with the rerun crowd. Thank you guys oh so very, very, very much. We'll see you at 3 o'clock later today. In the meantime, you take care. Bye for now. Bye, simpletons. That's right. <laughs>